Today we are continuing the public hearing for the uh, Article 8 of subsequent town meeting, which will be held on November 13th, yep. probably. Right, but I don't think we're going to get to it until the 13th. Oh, okay. I think that's the plan. But yeah, you're right. You're right. We don't have a – do we have a quorum for Zach? No. Okay. So we don't have to call it into order yet. Okay, good. Um, so recap from last meeting. Uh, we covered a, a lot of material on a very specific area of the bylaw, but as I think we all expected, that was going to be the case. A lot to cover with accessory apartments, accessory structures and uses. Um, we absolutely made some changes, which we all agree were necessary, and I think Nancy especially, thank you for providing that really good, important feedback, and also taking the time to meet with Gene and Jesse beforehand. I think that was useful. Um, there were some administrative errors that we uncovered, which I think we already knew that the uh, town council was going to be addressing. So that's all been incorporated. And um, yeah, we should probably call the Zach to order, given that we've got four members here now. Who would like to? <laughs> we can do that. Call the. Zoning Advisory Committee to order. Okay. Second. Thank you. Um, so, so what else? I'll defer a little bit to my board board mates up here, as far as a recap goes. We'll have some open items left over. From yeah. Last yeah. So, for today, yeah, let's just jump to what we're gonna try to accomplish today. We're going to review some email comments. We got, uh, I think, three emails with comments that we're going to sort through. Now, one was from Nancy, so I assume we've addressed most, if not all, of those. Uh, one is from Tony. And I think what it boils down to is there's probably a hand, it, there's a number of excellent comments, but I think we agree that there's probably a handful of items that Jesse's identified that we want to at least discuss. And then we've got a third one. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on who, who it was from, but um, some good comments in there as well. So we'll go through those. Um, we'll review uh, the definitions, see if any new ones need to be added. Uh, take a look at the site plan review section. Uh, there's some blanks in the table of uses for both business and industrial and residential. Um, so we'll take a look there and what's, what's correct heading? We just had a little typo in the heading. Oh, okay. Text. So we'll want to correct the heading there. Um, Section accessory uses in apartments. Take a look at those sections again. I called out some comments that were brought up in last Monday's and the Monday's meeting that we did not sort through. So we'll get through those as well. Uh, talk through commercial communications towers, which we addressed last on Monday as well. Not sure how much time we need to spend on that, but yeah, unless I, there's something I new. I think we just want to make it clear that um, based on town council's opinion, we're going to hold off on anything new there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, medical marijuana has a few changes, which we'll definitely want to review. Uh, section 6, no real changes, and then Section 7, non-conforming uses and structures. So we'll start with the public hearing and gather any additional feedback. Then we'll jump into the emails, and then we'll sort through these last few items. Yes, Megan. Hi, Jeff. Um, Megan Young, 40 Oak Street. Um, is it okay? Because I've got comments in two, three, four, and five. So as we go, as you go through, can we just can you just ask? You can do it that way whatever? too. Sure. Um, if, I mean, I, I just don't mind going along for the ride. Okay. But yeah, that's fine. All right. That's probably a little bit more efficient. But let me ask: Are there any general comments that we want to start with, or any areas of? Concern. I see. Don't be shy. I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> just some language. I just don't know. Um, as senior living facility, it's, it's outlined, but there's just question of um, how it's outlined. And it says under 55, but there's a child living in a situation, grandparents raising children. It's kind of it's a question of how that would be. So where is that? Is that the definition section or is that the actual section. new? Um, senior living section. The translation guidelines combined, you know. Do 
there was just a language, little language in there that I. Do you have the bylaw in front of you? Do you know what page is? I, I was looking at the translation guide. Oh, I'm sorry. You know. okay. All right, we'll, we'll start with your, let, let's hear what your concerns are. We'll, we'll catch up to you. Translation guide, it's page nine. Mm -hmm. What you're referring to, the senior independent living? Yeah. That you'll be 55 and no one would live under their 18. I just think that you're, I, I mean, I, what stated for is 55, but I think a lot of grandparents, people raise their children, and I think you're just being a little. Okay. Well, I mean, the. I don't know if you can. The Fine. Well, senior independent living is more or less, uh, this is a, a definition. I mean, it's not a regulation per se. Well, that's why I'm uh, making sure that you're not regulating versus, you know, a de it's a definition, not a regulation, correct? It's a definition. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So, this, to be clear, this is not the same thing as senior housing. Senior housing often um, uh, uh, is defined in terms of just and some anyway a place where you have to be 55 or older to live. This is a place where they get extended or new immediate care. So this is like mm. uh, this is like no um, actually uh, uh, assisted living in life. Oh, um, that was not the intent. I mean, the intent for the definition was age restricted housing. So which is what, uh, it's basically, it, it's our definition that, that falls into the age-restricted multifamily. Um, and this is basically a statement of the, the assumption. Um, so then you should get rid of ex um, um, extended or intermediate care facility, Just, right, a facility. You're right. What was the other term you were referring to? Age-restricted housing. That's not in here. But that, uh, boy, there, there is in the in the one of the sections I haven't reviewed yet. Mm -hmm. um, there is some reference to, to senior housing, or uh, I think there's a definition. In that okay. But, um, um, this is a, this is intended to be so in in the in the um, elderly care, long-term care world, um, the sort of least restrictive environment is, is usually called senior independent living. Then there is um, something called assisted living. Mm -hmm. And then there, you know, beyond that is nursing, uh, nursing home. So there's three levels. So that, so, um, but if that's not what you want to, if that's not what you want this to be, it's okay. Well, you just need to get rid of the idea that there's good care being provided there. Right. I think that's what we want, correct? The removal of extended or intermediate? Yeah. Um. Well, the real question is where is this referenced? <clears throat> right? Is it referencing it's in the senior, senior housing? No, it's Or in is it referencing... It's, re it's referencing what's being built in, in Business C by Pulte Homes. The Except in the smart growth? Yeah. No, not in the Can't smart growth. In the, in, the business, in the Business C. It's the... Um, I don't think so. In the non-smart growth Nothing. section yeah. of right. Business C. Which is, mm -hmm. is the... Uh, the other two <laughs> sections are non-smart growth. It, that's the... Whatever we want to call it, site plan review. Mm -hmm. Well, it defines whether you're defining something or regulating something. Yeah, it's yeah well, the, the this was a case where we ended up with with uh, six and one half a dozen of another. The uh, so on the use table, the it, 
it's on the same line as assisted living. So it's assisted living or senior independent living facility. Hmm. So if it's a 55 plus community, it doesn't determine that a person under 55 wouldn't be living there. Because you could have a 55 plus with somebody younger than 55 living there. But if you're in well, assisted living, you may not have somebody. Those rules are set up by the, by the project, by the developer, right. by the owners, but, not by us. But you're defining this here. That's why I'm saying. Well, we're, we're providing a term for, the, for someone to use, yes. Uh, I mean, if, if you find a paragraph elsewhere in the zoning bylaw that uh, expressed a regulation based on that term, that's a different matter. I don't, I don't remember offhand if we. I'm just saying that under your senior independent living, I just think that you're. Except that that's, this is what you see in the marketplace. This is heritage village that my parents lived in while they were still alive. It is precisely that. <laughs> it's, you know, they, they bought a condo and they Does that apply to all senior, is that how you're gonna define all senior independent living? Is your concern the fragment with no permanent residence under the age of 18? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that that should be removed? I think that's defined by whoever's building it or whoever's doing it. I think that should, I mean, that can't apply. I, I feel that's difficult to apply. There's a lot of seniors that will be living, that may be raising their grandchildren or may, may have well, a caretaker living with them or may have something. So I find that. Yeah, I mean, while, while that is absolutely true, uh, that doesn't mean that they're in a senior independent living facility. You know, if they own their own house, they do whatever they want. Well, how do you find independent living facility? <laughs> I mean, is there an issue removing it? I don't. I guess I don't see the issue. If well, if it's if, at the lowest level of that. Well, one second, George. I think I was going to say that. There are probably different implications for a scene for a 55 plus facility than there would be for a facility that's going to have uh, younger people with more cars, more traffic. So you have to pick one or the other. So we have here uh, age restricted multifamily dwelling, which is um, uh, right. That's what's down by Dunkin' Donuts and REI, right? I, I don't know what oh. that development is named, but <coughs> that's Maplewood very. Village. What's that? Maplewood Village. Yes, Maplewood Village. Okay. Um, that's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't apply. That's not what this is talking about. Mm -hmm. This is talking about a, um, a a senior living facility where you get care, housing and services. Housing and services. services. Right. And if and and that's this was actually. Um, uh, came out of the, um, the um, as it happens, the um, the Eric's um, artist. yeah artist, artist. Um, okay. and so if someone wants to build a facility that is senior and has care, these are the regulations they need to follow. If they want to build something else, age restricted or not we age must restricted, have a de definition for assisted living. So artists would be more assisted living. No, so artists. So not independent is. apartments. Yeah. Correct. This is yep. sort of the, yeah. On the tier. This so is the Sanborn next one. Is more of assisted. Sanborn would be more of that, and it's still independent. Yeah. And so, are you saying that in something like Sanborn, then, then the. Uh, the approach would be to allow um, children under 18? I couldn't I would not allow somebody they I would have to ask or, you know, I don't know. I mean, this, we're, we're in a whole time when a grandparent may be raising, and Maplewood Village would be, that would be considered, I could go in there and service up that place as people age there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The, we need Marcy. 
relevant? Right. So is this particular definition re relevant to the zoning, right? Oh. Go ahead, George. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But the reason why we were discussing this in the first place is if you look at some communities like the Linfield, example, who are really to give density bonus to this type of cluster developments, then they would sell this kind of approach by expecting the, you know, the having that, you know, that restriction there. Well, no, no school children, for example. No and that's how, I mean, it's a little bit more easy for a community to accept more density. I mean, these are common practices. In our case, I don't know if we have anywhere in our zoning, as David said, any type of provision for this kind of overlays or glasses or what have you. It's only a definition. So I don't think it is relevant. If we don't regulate it in any district or form, I don't think it is relevant at this point. Unless we discover that there is a tool to you know, to, mm -hmm. to see this kind of developments pop up and that may, you know, that may be something that we can discuss in the future. I, I guess the, re the reason why... I think I council needs to look at it further if you don't have, like, something other than this, because I also think you're treading on fair housing. The, the <laughs> reason why we had the three definitions was because last time around we had one def definition, which was nursing home. Mm -hmm. And so artist living came in and said, well, we don't we don't need to we're not a nursing home we don't need to comply with that so you know what we are not regulated at all we can go and build whatever we want right and, and so and so part of this was let's make sure that we have the spectrum of of uh, definitions to make sure that each <clears throat> each type of facility is regulated as or could be, as, or could be as um, um, as they would come up and not leave a type of of um, development that we know is happening um, and is likely to happen in Reading without a pl without a home within zoning. So I, I would advocate n not just deleting it because then it's setting ourselves up sure. for okay. a condition that has no that that it will happen, right. will be built in Reading, I'm sure, and has no regulation surrounding it, a whole, in essence. Okay. That's mine. Yeah. Okay. You guys I agree? mean, well, uh, the, I think we want the definition. I mean, I, I don't oh, think. I completely agree, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have a, uh, a current use table entry or set of regulations that References it. There, there's regulations. No, yeah. oh, okay. Um, it, it, Point me. <laughs> oh, five six six one. Um, the regulations really don't say a whole lot. I mean, aren't don't regulate a whole lot. Just the fact that it is permitted and this is a process you need to go through. Um, okay. I guess the question that I have is, by having it defined that way, would that forbid somebody who's younger than 18 from living there? Or is it just the definition? I would say, if it, I would say that, you're, that if you're intending this to refer to the care, a, a care yeah. facility, yeah. then you don't need the age restriction. Okay, that you, you, Maybe the 55, but you don't need the 18. Um, the um, if you if you um, even though it's in the definition, if, if this is what we're defining as being permitted, and if it doesn't meet the definition, then it's not permitted. So if you so, my recommendation I think would be keep the reference to care and remove the reference to. Age. Eight, 18. Leave that. Okay. The okay. And if you want to have, I mean, when, when we get into the back parts of, of the section, we probably will want to look at what you're doing with age restricted housing, which is a, you know, a different beast. And, and maybe we'll want to define.
define that and, and, and regulate it in some way. But okay. um, that, that term, leave age restricted, does appear in the back sections. And we'll need to make sure that the definition of that is, is, uh, is correct. In the sections we're doing now, the term age restricted does not appear. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'm thoroughly off in the weeds here. Um, because, I mean, quite literally, my parents lived in one of these for 20 years without the care. You know, okay, so they lived in an age restricted facility. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and that's not what this is supposed to be. This is, this and is there are senior independent living facilities that are advertised uh, in the Boston area mm -hmm. that I believe have the same restriction. But, but if they, and this is, this, the difference is whether they offer care or not. Oh, um, perhaps, but the basically senior living in the uses or the, the references that I have, I have seen includes the no permanent resident under the age of 18. That's the sort of that's the part of the definition of senior living is seniors only. Um, okay. So I mean, I it, but in this context, it actually doesn't it, it doesn't even matter whether it's senior or not. The point here is is more about it, it's it, it's independent, but independent in the sense that. It, it, you're, you do your um, own cooking. You're, you're not necessarily 100% able-bodied. Yeah, you have right. daily right. life assistance with daily life skills. Yes, um, and so whether that's senior or whether that's something else, it all f that fits into this type of um, land use that's trying to be regulated under this section. So it's senior, it, it's sort of quirky. Um, it's assisted living or senior living, independent living. It's not the age restricted that you're talking about um, that is regulated elsewhere. Okay. okay. This was all about, this all stemmed from nursing home. Yep. And, and, and the gap okay. and regulates nursing okay. homes and those types. Okay. Uh, so do we change nothing? Do we change something? Do we? I think the way <laughs> I'm recommending get rid of extended or intermediate care and remove the reference to 18. I think we need to keep the care. Care sounds like we yeah. keep the care, but remove the the reference. We to need to keep 18. the care. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's. Not oh, it conflicts not with the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not yep. a working yes. definition. Yep. <laughs> it's not a working distinction. If you, if you yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. We got that. Yep. So okay. I'm going to take out the the reference. Just the, the reference to 18. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's it? Okay. Beautiful. We flag the form. Thank you. No, we need just fix it. Well heck, we're on some definitions. Things are, some things are sufficiently true. Okay. <laughs> Do we wanna just start going through them and try to map back to the emails that we got? Sure. Let's try that. Let's see how that works. So I'm looking at, let's take a look at this email first from Michael and Leanne Webb from October 20th. They have questions and comments about, starting with yard, it's like the pictures and all that. So, if we look at the first one, <coughs> I think we've addressed this one related to front yard, rear yard, and the yep. graphic. Mm -hmm. So I think we're good on this one. Mm -hmm. um, the next one. There's a question on lot width. Huh? Or was that? Secondary. That was secondary. I think we were. We'll, I think know. they were suggesting to have it all on one graphic. 
which we were going <coughs> to do, right? Not with what with no. I think we were going. We updated the graphic to specify the difference between yard and required yard. Oh yeah, that's right. Which we okay. did. I like having it as a separate graphic. Okay, let's keep it. We'll keep it as separate. Marcy. Four yard, yes. What? Four yard. So, so you only need the required yard on the sides of the house, but not in front of it. That's it. I don't it think. It looks strange that there's it, not a required yep. yeah. side all the way along the. Because I'm with you. This says to me I could um, extend my um, my house there or building in some L-shaped off the back right up right, to the no lot line. Like. And I don't think that's what I, we're I don't, I don't saying. Think, I don't think we can have a graph that shows that. Yeah. Unless that's what we really want to have happen, but I'm pretty sure I don't that's think that's not the intent. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. So we need some more. I I okay. The required front yard should be as deep as the required mm -hmm. rear yard, because it's both 20 Same. and 20. So that needs to be adjusted okay. to be more accurate. In uh, what the yeah, go ahead. The problem comes from your def from the definition, which uh, and because um, you have defined side yard to extend not from from the from the street to the rear, but only from the front yard to to the backyard to the rear yard. So um, this is why I tried to get the word. This setback inst instead of okay. Yard. No, but this is this this is easily fixed. But you have to be comfortable with the idea that some of your land is both in the front and a, in the front and the side, and some of it's both in the rear and the side. So if you define side yard instead of extending from the front yard to the rear yard, you define it as extending from the street right, to just, the just to the rear the boundary. Just change it to the required front yard or the required. Then, then you're, um, uh, you will have defined, um, you will be able to draw the diagram so that the yards overlap. But the way you have defined it, let me see if I try this again. The way the definitions work right now is um, there is no portion of the land that is both in the rear yard and the side yard. Right. Well, then we need but to fix, fix the definition. If you want to fix the definition mm -hmm. so that it's okay to have part of the property be in both the rear yard and side yard, then the side yard could, you know, would extend down to here and up to here, and the required yard would also do that. Yep. So it just requires you to change your definition of side yard. And then, I, and then I, change your graphic. I would go with... with um, Nick's approach that just says from that goes from the required front yard to the required rear yard. Um, and then there's no overlap as opposed no. to from the required yard. The other thing is the definition of yard um, in here is wrong because we're referring it to it as the required yard and the way that we we define these in here now we're required we're creating a rear yard and a required rear yard and a side yard and a required side yard. So yard isn't You don't need yard. You just get rid of it. You know, the why we fought over this and gotten our made trouble for ourselves. You know, I don't care whether you call it a, a minimum yard or a required yard or a setback or whatever, but we know what we mean. We can't get the language right <laughs> and we can't get the picture right. Now the side yard does extend from the street line to the rear of the lot so in order to accommodate uh, driveways and, and garages which are allowed to be in the side yard. 
and the the <laughs> You know, the, the minimum front yard is, is X amount of square feet from the front line, and the rear yard is X amount of feet from the rear line. But apparently we don't know how to say that. <laughs> So, are we agreeing we get rid of the definition of yard, <laughs> adjust the graphic? Uh, way the, the, you, before you get rid of the definition, you may want to think about whether the... Um, Can't get rid of yard? The word yard, yeah, you probably don't need it. You, you could define the word yard as being any portion of the lot that's not occupied by the principal structure, but um, the graphic doesn't match that either. Uh, so I, I think you're better off just not defining yard at all. You've got front yard, you've got rear yard, those are all the, the word, and you've got required yard. So I think you're fine without any definition of yard. So then you've got front yard, rear yard is okay, side yard you're going to either change it to be from the required yard or from the street, whichever you prefer. But if we get rid of the definition of yard, nowhere do we say that in however we call yard, minimum, required, whatever, that that's an area that has to be um, unoccupied by structures above grade. So I, I, either that phrase needs to get worked into the others or you need to just keep that. But in fact, it's not even really factually ac accurate, is it? There are, there are, it's not required to be unoccupied. There are things that we will allow to be, to occur in the side yard. Yeah. Well, it says required to be unoccupied uh, by structures above grade, except for specified uses or structures, mm -hmm. which is so. self-contradictory, of course. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy? I remember that we had a great deal of discussion about the fact that we needed a definition of yard for our building inspector. And I don't want to take it out if that's going to cause us problems with people going to building inspector. So I would just ask if Gene can confirm that that's not going to be a problem if this gets taken out. Because we spent a lot of time talking about that. I think the real issue for the building inspector was whether or not structures could encroach into yards. That was his real concern, that it be clear in the bylaw if he can allow vehicles to park in a yard, if he can allow accessory structures to be in a yard. within the side yard and within the rear yard? Yeah, if it's behind the principal building. 
So a detached accessory structure, if it's single story, based on the bylaws, can be within five feet of the side and five feet of the rear. Uh, then it does mm -hmm. have to go from front to back, because be right. so you need that intersection, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. to go from the front side. lot line to the rear. Oh. The side yard has to go from the front mm -hmm. lot line to the rear yard line so you know where the intersection is, that five, yes. five foot five. Exactly, foot. where it goes to that required right, yeah. exactly. So then your definition is correct. Change it to that. So okay. what was that again, Nancy? The si area extending away from any side? Lot line between the required front no. yard. No, no. no. It, from it actually has to go to the lot line so from you the know street where the intersect. Okay. So you can push from, that structure. From okay. the street right. line. I see to the saying. rear line right. of the lot. Aw away from the side lot, side line of a lot. Between. Between. The front. The street line on which the lot has frontage. From the between the and the rear line of a lot of the lot. The street line and That's the rear. yard required. I don't know. Yeah. After it has frontage. Yep. Then and then move this graph. And here. the rear line of the lot. So none of those terms are defined. Street lines not defined. Rear lines not defined. Lot lines not defined. Well, at some yes, there are a lot of terms. I mean, there there are way more words in the zoning bylaw that that are um, uh, not defined than the ones that are defined. Um, we know what. Well, I mean, we've used street line on which a lot has frontage up in front front yard, so it's consistent. And we've used rear line of the lot in the definition of rear yard um, as well. Um, so at least it's consistent. Mm. Um, and, you know, the whole problem with, with, with zoning uh, uh, definitions of this sort is that some lots, it's a little hard to say what the rear lot is, what right. the rear line is. Um, and, um, you know, this works great as long as you have a nice rectangular lot or something right. that's closely to re rectangular, but sometimes it doesn't work quite so quite so well when the lot is, you know, of unusual shape. So, like real well, a lot? No, like it's it a lot because it said a yeah. lot. I mean, it's, it says the sideline of a lot. So okay. Continuing this say lot. forever. Uh, using the term street line is probably a bad idea because it's actually the lot line. Uh, no, it's, we don't mention the street at all. It's the lot line. Which um, one? And it's the, the, this, it's the, the portion of the lot which is, was used to determine frontage. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because <clears throat> as we see often, the street line and the lot line have really nothing to do with each other. We have a nice definition, or at least a long definition, of frontage that maybe we'll have. That, that might be. Right. Between the frontage? The frontage The line. definition of frontage. No, just go, go up to the, scroll up to the definition of frontage so that people can see it. And that definition has a diagram which includes street line. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, but we're not talking about, I mean, the, the regulation isn't written in terms of the street line. It's measured in terms of the lot line. <laughs> so we could change that. We're just mm -hmm. trying to, we're, we're circling back to make sure mm -hmm. we, we can. We're just trying to make sure that when you change one thing, that other things that refer to, that, that are relevant um, are made consistent. So you're suggesting that it, that front yard should say, instead of should saying street line, should say lot line on which the lot has frontage. Right. And then we'll make the same change in the definition of side. Okay, we can do that. All right, you got it? Uh, am I doing anything no, here? No, you're not changing anything on frontage. So in front yard, see where it says extending away from the street line? Yep. We're going to say a lot line. Okay. And then in, in the same thing in side yard. Between the street, this is where it says street line there. Yep. I'm going to change that to lot line. Can I suggest that um, we take we get rid of the definition of yard, but take most of it, starting from required to be unoccupied, and include that phrase um, as at the end of required yard, because that's really what we're defining as yard. So go Merge go to yard. yard. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So everything from required. Minimum map rule, front, rear, or side yard requ required to be unoccupied as specified in those sections. Yes. Good. After side yard. Side yard. Yeah. Okay. What I want to tell you about that is that we do allow on the side yard in a few places. But put, let's put it in and then we'll see whether we have to put something else. And we're going to delete yard. Yeah, you're going to delete that one completely. Then also let's move the uh, graphic underneath all of the yard definitions. Right. Made a dangling yeah. modifier. Yeah. Yeah. The as specified, the, the required to be unoccupied stuff needs to go at the end of the sentence. The end of the sentence. Minimum apple front, rear, or side yard as specified in those sections. And then I guess you need a that. That are yeah. required required to be on. Okay. After bylaw. Paste what you just what you just um, cut. Okay. Um, and then in after zoning bylaw, put in that is required to be unoccupied. Okay. We there? I think we're there. <sighs> All right. <laughs> won't let you, won't let you, nice work, team. Okay. I just, as long as it's good for the building inspector, I really I don't want people to get, you know, kicked off at the desk. 
Who's and who's gonna revise the graphic? We'll have it, BHP do it. You just have to. Okay. Yeah, you'll cool. Have to get or BHP do it. Yeah. They, yeah. I don't know what cross program they're using. Okay. Cool. Does that cover all the definition feedback from this email from the webs? I think it does. I'm just overwhelmed with paper right now. <laughs> you too, right? <laughs> That we had talked about yeah. the um, discussion with the driveway last time. Yep. And then just a point about creating flow charts and guides to help with the permitting process, which will be an ongoing yeah. task here at Town Hall. Good, okay. So did Megan have a... Um, yeah, I know. I'd, I'd, right. we're, we're, let's stay on definitions because I know well, Megan I has she, feedback. I think she has a definition. I do. I have, I'm still on the... Yeah, I have three to yeah. check in on. Um, first is the civic and private clubs. And first of all, thank you very much to Jessie. I spent an hour with her and to town council. Because I had... And there was so much that has changed, and I really appreciate the effort, everybody's effort here. Um, with the civic and private club... When I first read it, and I read not profit organization, private club, not profit organization, I put a little question mark and put, in my mind, it was like, is it always that? And it goes back to what you were saying, John, would there be someone that comes in that is a private club, that is a for-profit club, and said, well, this doesn't, this doesn't apply to me? So I was kind of stuck on it, and I looked at um, another, um, another zone bylaw, and they use the word um, customarily Nonprofit organization. Um, so it would read something like, let me see. But anyway, I just I was just wondering if if that really is so. Is that an operated by customarily operated by a nonprofit organization? So I didn't know. Um, they they said that it was just my concern that would we ever get a person that would be a private no. club that would be for profit and what would we do with them? So that was one of the questions. So I think the answer is, if it's, this use is intended to be things like the Elks Club and the Lions Club and, and um, uh, maybe, is elastic, may, maybe is elastic enough to include a golf club if it's private, if, if it's a nonprofit organization. But it's not supposed to include a nightclub. Right. Um, I, I would... I would not be very happy to see the word customarily in there because um, that calls for a, a judgment. If we make it look sort of like a Lions Club, then but it happens to be for profit. I, I think profit for profit and not for profit is a nice clean thing. We can you know there's documentation and, and what have you. <coughs> it's clear yes and no. Otherwise, you're making a judgment. We we did have that very same conversation. Um, and um, and I, you guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but our resolution to that very thing was there's a, another thing, um, another uh, um, land use in here defined as community center, yes. um, which um, which could if if you were a for profit entity um, that did sort of many of the same things that a uh, civic or private club does but you happen to be for profit then that's where you m may fit that's mm -hmm. and that's where so the, the definition says non-profit what's that the definition for community center says non-profit no it doesn't yeah it says where a variety of recreation are, are provided oh, by a non-profit agency but that's, I'm glad you had the conversation. That's all I really <laughs> Where are we yes. looking? Are we looking at this translation guide or are we looking at this? Because this one says nonprofit. No, no, this it one does, does too. This one does too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, uh, okay, and thank you. And if you guys feel like there's somebody that comes in and it, you've got it handled, that's perfect. Um, but to that agreement, and I brought this up with Josie too, where the civic and private club starts out where it, it says, um, a facility owned and operated by a nonprofit organization. When you go down to community center, it puts the nonprofit agency at the bottom or at the end of it, and I think it should agree. So I would recommend a multi-purpose family center, community facility, or social service establishment 
operated by a nonprofit agency for a variety of, so it would be in agreement with the same writing that you use for civic or private property. That's fine. That doesn't really change the intent. It doesn't change anything. No. It's just well, working. Okay. It's just agreement. And then I noticed also in, um, in the fast food restaurant, um, it's just, you say any, any, and then there's an A. And it provided. I think it's under restaurants. Now, it used to be under fast food restaurants. So it's restaurant fast food. Currently says A, and all the other ones are any, any restaurant. This one says A restaurant. So I guess I just recommend changing that to any. Okay. In agreement. George, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to, I was looking at the recent interpretations of the Dover Amendment that, you know, any non-profit has to have an educational core curriculum in order to stand the test, that, you know, that might be challenged. So I, I thought that something like this might morph into a problem with Dover type of uses, but I don't think that that's an issue anymore. Okay. Good, thank you. The, before we declare victory on the civic or private club, um, Come on. It, it, well, you think, if I can add something, I, I don't recall adding that clause at the end provided by a nonprofit agency. I, I thought our discussion, and I may be off base here, but I thought our discussion was you know, like what happens with the, um, with uh, down in Redding Woods, there's that little um, um, building that's a community center. Community center. Um, it's not, I, I don't know how it's run. I'm going to guess at least at the moment it's run by a for-profit corporation. Um, it may in the future be run by, by the homeowners association or something, but um, I, I thought that that's what our, I, I thought that that's what the difference between the sort of the two and when you, when you go back and look at where they're allowed and where they're not allowed, I thought that's where we ended up. So I'm, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was way too late at night and we just said, yeah. oh yeah, add that yeah. or, or I maybe I, I, I misremember. I mean, first off, we had, we had the bizarro de definition before the uh, what was it, combined services facility? Uh, yes. That didn't then no one knew what it was. No, yeah, we didn't have any agreement <laughs> on that. Um, but <laughs> never could. I think the the, ca the characteristic of the civic or private club is basically members only. It's a membership club, for members and guests. It's not open to the public. Uh, now that includes things like the the lions and and the. Uh, maybe the Rotary or, or whatever, yep. whether or not they're nonprofit, I you know I'm not sure that that um, is a useful distinction. The community center we deliberately had in there for things which were um, venue specific, like the uh, at the development or um, something. I mean maybe the Matera Cabaret, maybe, um, but something which is for owners slash residents, um, primarily the use. Now, the if we keep the nonprofit in here, are we indirectly excluding um, any for-profit membership club? Or, I mean, or deliberately? making any sense at all. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't know where, for example, the country club would, would fall, which, what category they would fall into. I mean, at the end of this, do we just have to decide which one is non-profit and which one is, doesn't have to be non-profit? 
Right now we have two definitions that both the there, there's no distinction between that categorization. Civic has to stay non I think civic has to stay nonprofit. The other uses fall under something else. The community center one should not say nonprofit. Okay. That's what I think. What's that? I think the community center should not have the nonprofit clause in it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, okay. but well, go ahead, George. It's something that we have in the number in Zach were discussing recently coming up like uh, apartments in the A40 or A80 that we might want something to minimize having to work for other areas, something small and skilled, which we belong to like a moment time. We have a few of those. So that cannot be a non problem. No, we cannot see how to have allowed it and a special friend now because of the table of uses. Yeah, right. Well, the, the definition that, that is here for community center doesn't resemble much of anything that I thought we talked about. Um, so now that I've pulled it out, does it seem better? Well, but the, um, the clubhouse at Pulte Home at, at Reading Woods, what's, what is that? It's not. Th it's not this. It's not a social, you know, community. It's it's a community facility, but it's not a social service establishment. It's a multi-purpose family center establishment where a variety of recreational educational services are provided. Yeah, you have to change that. That you know, it has to be uh, providing a variety of enhanced service. You can't leave that at the end. should read a multi-purpose family center community facility or social service establishment providing a variety of recreational, educational, social health care or counseling services. Right. Get rid of where, get rid of the last couple of words. So I think Much it better. fits in that. Right. Okay. Good. It's special permit anyways, right? Yes, special permit. Did we allow it by right? Well, in, that's a question. Is it going to be a yeah. hall or is it going to have to have permits to do things there? Mm. Depends on where we're talking about. Well, special permit can be residential districts. And, and. Uh, there's EPA and all the I'm sorry, is what was the question? For its own use or is it going to be? Um, No, no, we get one you get one special permit that authorizes yeah. okay, the, to do that. To okay. do that. Yeah, the special permit is is allowing it to be there and right. then exactly. how it's managed is uh, is okay. sort of a different um, a different issue, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Sorry. No, 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 that's good. That's good. No problem. Moving on. So I think Megan that covers your it does. on, on definitions. <laughs> Tony, I know we've got a couple here from you for definitions. Chairman, sure, address 130 John Street. Feel free to skip over anything that has been addressed or is detailed in minor. I know there are quite a bit of comments in there. They were just for, for discussion from the board. I was going to focus on the ones that are highlighted in green that I think Jesse called out. That's if you're fine. okay with that? Yes. So the first one is 6.3.9 abandonment of. Or, or, excuse me, abandonment or non-use? No, no, we, never mind, yeah, just we abandonment. We, we covered that one. I Did think. we cover that last time? I believe so. No, we discussed it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. It's getting late. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, no, it was then. At that okay, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Floor area net, this is a typo, so yep, correcting that. Floor area ratio, anything we need to do with that? Um, I'm just going, my eyes are just looking for the green, so. I think that was 
to be fixed now. Yep, I think that was corrected. Okay. Front yard, yard front, we've tackled that. Beaten to death. <laughs> <laughs> um, lot coverage. Correct. Yep. We're good there. Yes, sir. I would just like to point out for everyone involved is that now lot coverage includes accessory building as opposed to back did not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That was purposely done. Mm -hmm. um, rear yard, we're correcting that picture. <laughs> Still not right. But <laughs> getting there. <laughs> getting closer. Um, wetlands resource area. The old zoning bylaw refers to section 5.7 of the Reading General Bylaw, which is correct. It's uh, 7.0. That was updated as okay. part of the general bylaw updates. That just was not carried over into zoning. Okay, so we're going to make that change? Yes, it's okay. correct in the draft. Okay, good. All right, so that covers your questions on definitions. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, do we want to move to the next section? One, one last little thing. I think oh, I yeah. So here's the deal. Under the um, under state law, the CPDC and the ZBA can establish consulting fees by regulation. Um, they can't do it. They can do it whenever they're issuing special permits, or when they're doing subdivision review, or. Um, Variances. Uh, they, since site plan review is a creature of the bylaw and not the zoning act, um, state law does not authorize consultant fees that way. Yep. So you have to do it in in your bylaw. But the rest of it is supposed to be done by regulation of the of the appropriate board. So that's why it's limited here just to the, to the site plan review. Okay. Good. Thank you. Because they're the ones who do site plan review. Okay. okay. So now section three, we're good with. Oh, maybe. Go ahead, Megan. Two. Um, three change. point. Let me see. Um, Can we change anything? Three point three point seven. It's just that uh, this is just three point three point seven is just a So number one, we can't make changes. We can't make changes to section three because it's not part of. It's not part of the area. warrant. Oh, okay. So that yeah. was already voted. Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Well, that doesn't. It doesn't. That doesn't mean that that we caught the typo. There. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. But it, that one's already been adopted. It has to stay that way. So it has to. We. It's not. I mean. It's not on the four corners. We yet. can. Well, you know, right. we can okay. revisit this stuff when we're doing cleanup. Yeah. At some point in the future, yep. we will okay. be. Yeah, plenty of cleanup to do after this. Yeah, Should I fix the It's still oh, under no. AG review. Can't, if, it can't. Was, if it was adopted with, if it went before the voters with a typo and and it was adopted that way, the the um, AG will make us um, correct it by vote of town meeting. The <laughs> <laughs> typo. A typo. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk. Okay. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I guess I'll have to speak with I him. I guess he didn't consult before he's mm -hmm. already sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's all right. No, no, that's fine. No problem. Um, all right, let's move to section four then. I know we've got on our outline here section 4.6, but anything? We've got some feedback from Mr. DeRosa. Megan, are you good on section four? I know. I have some. Okay. Um, let's let's just quick let's quickly go through Tony's. <clears throat> um, so 4.2.2, section 5.11 of the general bylaw, which is correct. So section 1.8, we got that corrected. Mm -hmm. um, special permit granting authority, 4.3.2, we're going to defer to town council. Have we discussed this one yet? No. Okay. So. I forgot one question. 7.3.2, Jean, if you want to scroll to that. Mm hmm. 7.3.2? Yeah, this is. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, my comment was basically that the section that says the chairman of the CBDC. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Jean. Four. Additional um, members referencing the old of section, so we go four to eight. Sickness, illness, in absence, uh, inability, conflict of interest, mm -hmm. and so forth. Sounded as though you, the chairman of the CBDC, could open additional members to sit in at the time. Oh. That's 4.3.2. Is that new? Yeah, no, it's no, taken out. Took it away. I took it out. Oh, we're taking it out? Okay. It's gone. 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 No. It felt powerful for a second. The, uh, <laughs> the, yeah. No, you can't do that. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, next one, Board of Appeals. Um, okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Before we abandon 432, um, we have had in the past associate members, and there have been, I believe, cases where an associate member can stand in for a uh, board member uh, because the associates are also appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Is that not no longer the case? Isn't no. that the kind of vote that become completely the board? Charter, so this problem is being addressed in the charter. Um, okay. It was posed to me this morning, so I don't have the answer yet. But <laughs> um, uh, the charter clearly provides for associate members of the ZBA. And the charter committee wants to provide for, ch for uh, associate members of all appointed boards. And, right now, yeah. Um, the, and the question is, is there any state law that would that that would make that not appropriate? Um, <coughs> the example that immediately comes to mind is is most towns do, if they want to have associate members of their conservation commission, they have to get a special act. But I believe the answer is going to be, as long as we do it in the charter, we're fine. But if you do it in the charter, you don't need to do it in the bylaw. Okay. So at the moment, you don't, the CPDC does not have associate members, correct? Well, it did because that's how I got on the board. And were you allowed to okay. vote at the time? Uh, on at least one occasion, yeah. Okay. Uh, although I don't, I think that that was done, or I'm almost 100% positive that was done in error. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, you, you. Scribner's error. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. If there's no bylaw that provides for it, there's no the, the statute doesn't do it. I don't think you can do it by bylaw, but you pro, but you probably can do it by charter. charter. And that's what we're going okay. to do. And it was posed to me this morning. Is there any reason why we can't do it for all appointed committees? And I, I can't think of a reason, but I haven't actually spent the time to. Okay. To, but so it's covered elsewhere. It's going to be done in the charter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so the next one, Board of Appeals, 
There is hereby established a board of appeals of three members and three associate members. Charter says two associate members. I think they actually and, took out that And that's completely that gone because the, yeah. the bylaw does just, not establish the board of appeals. Mm -hmm. The charter does. Yep. Good, good, good. So we just just go into that. powers. Minor site plan review procedures, sets of plans, noted. This is a typo, it's my Okay, correct. we got that fixed. Oh boy. Um. Uh, Tony pointed out that certain uh, review criteria for site plan review were omitted, but we have added that back in into the draft. Oh, good. That's great. Thanks, Tony. And then we've got another one. Are both of these comments the same? Um, oh no, no criteria for denial. No criteria for denial is listed. Mm, that's Noted. because you really can't deny site plan approval. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it's a review. Uh, so that that's section four uh, for Tony. Uh, Megan, what, what comments do you have? Other data here. Four one one. Other yeah, data. Third I'm sentence <coughs> to the end. Other data as. You could go with other data deemed necessary and not put any kind of pronoun in there. <coughs> and then if you go down to enforcement in 4.2.3, mm -hmm. you've got again, this is right at the end of the second. Um, or a line, he, so I think it should just be a he slash she, or his slash her, I guess it's changed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the third line, I'm sorry, in such enforcement of his slash her action or refusal to act. You see that? Mm -hmm. Third line. Uh, oh, okay, got it. Four dot two dot three. His sorry. slash her. Yes. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. Before that. Is. Before that. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, so there, there are basically two ways to deal with this problem, um, and one is to do what we're doing here: is change all the he, he he's to F, you know, either yes. he slash she or F, I prefer to S use slash. S slash he, so that it's yeah. shorter. Um, but um, that, so you can do it that way. Um, the charter um, committee does, leaves all the gender, all the pronouns as as uh, masculine, and then writes a paragraph that says says masculine mean the, the masculine pronoun also refers to the feminine. You can do it that way. Um, why don't we put? Uh, why don't we create our own pronoun and use that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a you know, this is a, a this is a persistent problem in all forms yeah. of legal drafting. Um, so. Um, anyway, I, I didn't know it was just. No, consistency. no, consistency is good. We like consistency, right. but as long as the. Does so. anybody have a preference? Do the paragraph. Well, I try. Really seen I, it yeah. at all. Well, we we pretty much try to avoid doing it yeah. because it's. I mean, this is the only place I've actually seen a gender. Mm. And, okay. Um, so. So if it if it's really as rare as that, it's probably just easier to fix it here. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's mm. do that. I would just. And, yeah, and, uh, that's fine. All right, and then can I do you want me to keep going? Yeah, please. Okay, so go to if you go to um, four dot four dot two dot one when you yep. talk about um, and I really appreciate changing it to the zoning board of appeals, but 
If I'm not mistaken, that's referring to the building inspector. And if you don't say that right, the oh, it's, uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. It's 4.4.2.1, I'm sorry. 4.4, there it is. Four Right. And it's to hear and decide appeals in accordance with Section A of Chapter 40A of the General Law. Is that actually to, in, in looking at another one too, it, it's referring to if you have a, a problem with what the, either you actually have recourse, the building inspector says something that you could. And you can appeal it to the board. And I'm, board I'm wondering if we can actually say that instead of being they here, um, that we can, and, that we can actually, and actually they've said, I, I'm looking at Belmont again, and Belmont was really clean on, they're very clean on identifying uh, the fact that it's the building inspector. And that, I, I think if you're trying to get user friendly, you want to tell people the zoning board can hear building inspectors instead of this chapter 48 of the general laws, which I'm gonna have to as an individual go to and find out what that means. Hmm. Where's that? Oh. <clears throat> okay. A couple of things that, that I'm so, I mean, it's too bad David uh, Trenello isn't here. Uh, I was under the impression that a variance for use is prohibited by the Massachusetts general law. Yeah. You can, pro you can prohibit it. Zoning, the Zoning Act does not prohibit it. Many towns do prohibit use variances. <coughs> okay. Um. <coughs> so. So, Jeff, in the 4.4.2.1, what it said is it's a, it, it referred to appeals. And it says to hear and decide an appeal taken by any person aggrieved by reason of his or her ability to obtain a permit or enforcement action from yeah. the building inspector. That, that's the direct language out of the statute. I was Great. just copying it so that I, oh, perfect. so that, um, I so you can, you can do that if you, so. Okay. So yeah, it's, where are we? This, that's not where we no are. Variance. No variance. No, no. And this is the powers of the, go, roll, scroll up. So it's here. To hear and decide appeals. Yep. Taken by any person. Aggrieved by reason. Oh, the statute says of his. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of his slash her. Inability to obtain a permit or enforcement action. You could do that. And his, her. I'm, I'm with you. I, I just, I was just, yeah. You're right. That's better. It's always better to just avoid it. Take him by. Did I hit get aggrieved wrong? Is it I E? Aggrieved. Yeah, you've got it wrong. It's I E. A G G R I E. Okay, so okay. now we, uh, enforcement action um, from the building from from the building inspector. Okay, and then I'm going to do you a bad service. Because you should take all the, starting with by and everything that you've written, yep. and move it to the end of the sentence. <clears throat> and then you need to fix the meaning. And you need to what? To hear and decide appeals, comma, taken in accordance with section 8 of chapter 48 of the Massachusetts General Laws, comma, by well, any person aggrieved by aggrieved reason of by an inability to obtain a permit or by an enforcement action from the building inspector. Would you obtain no it, no aggrieved so by his inability to obtain a permit 
or inability to and interesting that's that your enforcement action because it's let's see if there's any okay so there's actually more you're right there's more to the sent to okay aggrieved by any person aggrieved by reason of inability to obtain a permit or enforcement action from the building inspector or by an order or decision of the building inspector okay so there's three kinds of appeals okay you, you were denied a permit like a building permit right you can appeal that you asked him asked the building inspector to um, enforce the zoning byline he refused or, or failed or he issued some kind of a, uh, of an enforcement order and you don't like it so you can appeal it so those three kinds okay I mean it's I agree with you I think <coughs> that we should start with the order decision of the building inspector or okay so by Basically, any person yeah, aggrieved things. by then take an order or decision of the building inspector and stick it up there it will re it will sound better if you do that aggrieved, aggrieved by, by the building inspector or by reason of and inability not necessarily by can, reason of an inability you can get rid of reason by of. reason of yeah you can get rid of that by an inability how's that and then get a or by at the end okay yeah like that vegan Okay, I'd want to make one change. See that comma there? Mm -hmm. Put it after taken instead of where it is. Taken comma. And what about an and before enforcement action? A permit or an enforcement action for the inspector? To obtain a permit or an enforcement action. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Okay. Next. Next. Um, site plan review. Uh, I, I don't so it's four dot six, right? Four dot six. Yes. Okay. Um, can we say? I guess this is a, a question. I'm sure you guys brought it up. Um, you say that if the site plan review number A. Well, I'm just covering. Uh, 4.6.4.1. Gene, I'm sorry. You said 4.6.4.1? It is, yes. Okay, yep. It says that um, the site plan review must be submitted to the CPBC. Is it actually submitted to the CPBC or is it submitted to the Office of Community Planning and Development during business hours? We receive it on their behalf. Right. Want to, should they, does an applicant need to know that you've Here's my question, I guess. I, again, in reading other areas, one of the things where I know we are advocating for is to come into community planning and development, drop off to check in with them, at, you know, to kind of even review it, submit it, review it, that kind of thing. And it is mentioned in the minor site plan review. That point is mentioned in the minor site plan review. It isn't mentioned in the site plan review. So I didn't know if that would be worthwhile to encourage people within here to submit it, come in, submit it, 
and um, also review it with the, um, I, and, I, and I know that you could have those, that language in um, the minor site plan. Mm -hmm. It's in B. It seems like it's in B to mm. me. It's just a question. So in B, so B it says that within 10 days you're supposed to um, initiate discussions with the town planner. Is that? I think but she's talking about A. I know. <coughs> um, well, it's, it's, I think the, the, I guess that's okay. I, the thought would be that um, is where they're submitting it to when you say to the mm -hmm. CPDC, if people don't know, do you want to say to the off, you know, at to the office or to the town Three. office representing CPC? I just didn't know if it was clear. I think we so, get into that. So for minor site plan review, we say the the applicant shall submit to the CPDC through the town planner's office. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, through the town planner's office. Something yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for Section 7, all of the um, uh, of Chapter 40A. There are a whole lot of deadlines there. Yeah, you can repeat. You can re you can repeat them here. No, we probably don't want to. No. And they got to maintain it in two spots potentially, and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, because the site plan review is very extensive, and I guess that was why I was wondering, with zoning board of appeals, is there anything that you want to tell people, or hmm? is, is it just checking with you and? Oh yeah. Site so plan the reason we did it in in as Chris minute. just reminded me. Site plan review is a creature of this bylaw, so we have to specify everything. Mm. The, these other things are all creatures of the statute, so you have to follow the statute. So by referencing the statute, you, you have to follow the statute. And the Zoning Act is no, is is a notorious example of how statutes ought not to be drafted. So we don't really want to replicate <laughs> Weren't they going to fix that? Right, and then we we have my, noticed that. My last question <coughs> was, um, originally was on flow, but you actually did a very good job of changing. Because when I was looking at the flow of how this worked, one in particular was that you moved, which I thought was a great move, was, um, I don't know where it is now, but as we went by site plan review, you had to jump back to applications and that kind of thing. So one of the things I was wondering about, just when I think of administration, the first thing that working with economic development more than I, the one thing I always learned is the biggest thing about enforcement is the building inspector. And like it to me in administration, he's like the, that's the first thing I would think he would want to mention versus it was weird to go right to permits instead of starting with something like the administrators, uh, it's, instead of starting with the building inspector first and then moving to permits. Just because it, to me that is who administers the zoning. So anyway, that was just a thought. So you're suggesting that 4.1 and 4.2 should be flipped? Well, you kind of enforce the permits, though, right? I mean, it's not the only things, correct? We we heard a lot about, I mean, the comments that we got. People wanted to understand permitting. In all the other sections, it, it kind of has like a little intro. Not much. Mm. I know all the purpose things went away, but there's mm. a little intro into the section. Administrator doesn't, administration doesn't really have that. And so when we started with permits, it put me, I didn't really understand where I was coming in to the conversation. Like, what is administration? So that was why I thought it seemed like the building inspector might be a good place to start versus the permitting. But it, that it's not very friendly to no, start. No, that's what I thought. The punishing <laughs> enforcement <laughs> I, I say, number one. <laughs> in most the enforcement thing is actually gay at the end. Yeah. But, but uh, this definitely gay point. Thing, Just kidding. The 4.1 <laughs> permits does begin with the building inspector shall require of every applicant for a license. Right. Permit See, and it's you're, yeah, you're starting to talk about what the building inspector does before you introduce the building inspector and what his designee is. So I thought that was. Hmm? You're talking about, hey, he's permitting. It's like, well, who, who the heck is this guy? And then you would, you would actually address it. Okay, so so you're suggesting that 421, the building inspector is hereby authorized as the officer responsible for enforcement of the zoning by law. You want that to be first. Not the whole of 4.2, but just that one sentence. I think that would be great. Because then you, you talk about him in 4.1.1 immediately. At least you would identify who he is. Is the building Most of the administration is the responsible uh, responsibility of the. Uh, well, maybe we put that in there too. The town planner is responsible for the administration and the building inspector is responsible. I, 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 I'm not wild about starting with enforcement. We have we already have that in our other places, and it's, you know, putting all your fees and fines on page two is not great. 
I just think this, I, I like your idea about the, it's me, what is administration? It's administration of zoning and maybe just what, the, who the different people are in town that administer zoning. Uh, if it is the, the town planner that does the administration, if it's a building inspector that does the um, licensing and permitting and that kind of thing, but just something in the beginning that talks about what administration is before you jump into permits. Yeah, I think that the building codes chapter one, that's the administration section, usually has an opening paragraph that says this section sets up the administration, the enforcement, the permitting, and then everything else is explained later. So if you just had a small intro paragraph, you wouldn't have to start with enforcement. You would just say that this section outlines the uh, process or the responsibilities. I'd have to look at the code to see how that's specifically mm -hmm. written. But that, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't change anything. Well, it's really just the structure that you're talking about because if you look at, if you collapse it up to the four, the 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 one, the four point one, four point two, four point three, when you look at four point three is special permit. It's all about entities, but four point one and four point two are not about the entity, exactly. which that really should be about the entity. Where if you follow that same logic, because four point. Four is about the ZBA. Four point five is right. about CPDC. Da, 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 da. Oh, no. So there's there's a, just a, a structure mm -hmm. issue there. Right. That's all I'm saying. So, so how can we correct that? Just, just the introduction paragraph that we're describing do that. Belmont, do you have Belmont handy? <laughs> I do actually have Belmont handy. Belmont does start out with, with that. This it what? does start out with. Um, yeah, what do they say? Hold on. They start out enforcement. They start out with enforcement and penalty. Do they have like an <laughs> overview? <laughs> And then they go to compliance, and then they go to design, sign, plan, review. So it, it's not at all similar. It's just, it, and it would be, and I like, I really lean towards Nick, just give me a little bit of what this area sure. is. Sure, yeah. Can you? Well, the, Under administration. Oh. the wording that we have here is, is more or less straight out of our existing bylaw, uh, Section 7 both in order and content. I know, that we're changing that. Okay, so, so she's looking for a sentence that would go above 4.1 right. that right. says, Well, she's looking for like this sec this 4.1 section. that says building inspector. No, yeah. no. No, she just wants something that, that lays says, out the section. Right, that says, that's it. This, this section um, sets forth Well, the reason sets for the uh, provisions, uh, the, the procedures, uh, not, uh, not not procedures. Sets, <coughs> forth the re sets forth the responsibilities for administration of the zoning bylaw. Okay. Um, however, if you look at 4.3 and 4.4 and 4.5 uh, and 4.6, it would make perfect sense to have 4.1, say, building inspector, and demote permits and enforcement to 411 and 412. With the question of do you even need those titles? So you're suggesting in 4.1, instead of calling it permits, call it building inspector. Right. And then take the, the enforcement stuff and 
get rid of the title 4.2 enforcement and make 421 make it 414 and 422 becomes 415? I don't think okay. we well. want to get rid of permits. Is people, people want to know how do I get my permit? Yeah. Like, let's not make it hard for people to find that. Yeah, but you get the answer is you get your permits from the building inspector. The same way. Which is, which is what it says right under there, so I don't think we need to. Um, look, 4 <laughs> four three says special permit granting authority, and de defining an, an actor, if you will. 4-4 four four is Zoning Board of Appeals, another actor. 4-5 is Community Planning and Development Commission, another actor. Tony? Chairman, I think this is following the process that we're going to follow. Uh, the first thing that you do, whether you're looking for a variance or whatever, is you see the building inspector, and you say, this is what I want to do. You request a, a permit. And he then tells you, you're going to need a special permit, you're going to need a variance, you're going to need this. So this follows the process that people will follow to get their permit. So are you I say in agreement with is. Dave? Leave it as is. No, I say leave it as is. Leave it as permits. George? things that we have in our parking lot for future consideration is a flow chart and in my office we've talked a lot about having something on the wall that the building inspector or people that just walk in could be guided by about the permitting process that's very much something we have every intention of getting to yeah. so if it's not crystal clear here as an administrative uh, effort I think we can make that a lot clearer this is how the International Zoning Code reads uh, in its first chapter. If this doesn't do it, I say we just move on. But um, this section establishes the duties and responsibilities of the Zoning Code official and other officials and agencies with respect to the administration of this code, the Zoning Code official and or designee shall be referenced to hereafter as the code official. But I think that first sentence might do it. This section establishes the duties and responsibilities for the Zoning Code official and other officials and agencies with respect to administration of this code. Yep. You could add yeah. in there if you wanted something else about permits, but it's all explained now. No, let's add that. I don't think we want to move things this. around. Yeah. I, just, I just was saying yeah. if you could just give something pretty Yeah, cool. no, let, let's add that sentence. I think that's good. Instead of the one that we've made up on in whole cloth, because I guess lawyers are very happy always to copy something. 
sure. <laughs> sure, because they still charge the same amount. They just <laughs> get the money to <laughs> somewhere else. Presumably, they, they've had some experience with that, so. Um. Sure. Duties and responsibilities. This section establishes the duties and responsibilities for the zoning code official, which you can use any term you want there. We call him the, the building, the building, building inspector. inspector. Right. And other officials and agencies. Agencies? Yeah, we'll have to fix that. But go ahead. Go ahead. Put it all the, with respect to the administration of this code. Okay, so other officials and boards, boards. Right. Okay. And boards. We use authorities. Well, we have boards, boards, The zoning, uh, the CPDC, and the zoning board of appeals, because that's really what we're referring to, right? Yep. The building inspector. With respect to community services department. Like officials, right? Well, we get rid of that. But we can put the, put. Let's do that for them. Get rid of and, that's, so just come up as a board of appeals. And other officials. Yep. Good. How's that? Good. Yep. Change just full on section. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I just don't want to run the risk of opening that can of worms. But so, John, just, just one, I hate to do this. One suggestion, though, on your point, uh, uh Megan, is um, when you read through special permit granting authority, it all talks about all these powers that CPDC has but we haven't yet introduced who CPDC is. So perhaps just simply <laughs> rearrange so that 4.3 is actually CPDC and then it goes into special permit granting authority, which is one of the actions of CPDC and follow on just that, that way. Flow. And that would flow. So I, I hate to suggest that, but I think it's a full just the, yeah. the full section swap. Four five becomes. So change so four three and move four three out of that. Yeah. What am I putting into four three? Four five. Four. You're moving four five up, so that it becomes section four three, and then everything just moves down. Four five and four six, right? No, nope. nope. just four nope. five. Just four five. That's going up to. Where did you say, John? To uh, it becomes the new four, four three. It becomes a new four three. So right after four two three. Not smart yet. Didn't didn't use styles or anything. 
Uh, all, all formatting of this document is um, um, challenged. Uh, yeah, it's challenged because Challenge. it's been passed around from so many different computers that um, it, it's been stripped of its formatting and any number of times. So. Sure. Four point three is what this is going to be, right? Yeah. Does that? Oh. <coughs> Oh, oh! I didn't realize Eric. Don't mean to call him out, but <laughs> second. Thanks, guys. Is that everything at four? Four. Okay, good. So. We'll come back to site plan review. Let's go to section five. Or do we want to take a break before we? We want to take a break. I think. Okay. All right. Uh, five minute break. Yep. Okay. Mm. Sorry, I thought it would have all been formatted.
All right, let's keep going. Um, so now we're on section three, five. And we've got, tell you, if we don't get anything done tonight other than the table of uses, that's okay. So let's let's do that. Do you want to jump into table of uses? Because there's some blanks that we can fill well, in. Well, we have to, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> How did we end up with blanks? <laughs> We had some inserts. definitions of uses that were not in the table. Town Council had caught okay. most of these. So we're correcting the headings. Yep. yep. That's already been done? It will be. Okay, so. Commercial and industrial. Yep. The front, like, Bray had said, this has found, I had to redo this table, like, four times. And and my, my assistant probably also did it four times. And, and I, apo I apologize. I just we thought we had it correct. Oh, that's awful. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So the first one. Wait a minute. What's up? What? It's 5321. Yeah. Hmm? It somehow got into the heading. 531. Oh, 531. It's supposed to be 531 five, business and industrial. Okay. So the first row we need to look at is adult daycare. Any reason we wouldn't want to just copy it as it is for child care facility? Child care facility, you're required to make them all buses. Adults, you're not required. So then, don't, you're sort of certainly free to make them all the same, but you're not required to make them all the same, all the buses. Just make them all special permit. Uh, well, maybe not business A. So this is just all the commercial districts, right? Mm -hmm. I just say? Yeah, right. SPP for the first four? Is that right? No, because I, I, I was still reading the old title on my copy, which said residential district. This is all commercial districts. Business right. and industrial. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem. This is run like a business, and, right? Definition is a facility where care for the elderly or functionally impaired adults is provided in a protective setting for a portion of a 24 hour day. We like have one on Main Street coming. Yeah, I, them anywhere. Yeah, I can't imagine. I, I can't think of the externality that, would, that 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 use would cause. They would say it's not appropriate for specific commercial. Okay. Right. Including I, the PUDB and the PUDI? I mean, I'm not arguing against it. I'm just questioning. You know, it would be nice I, if they all had outdoor space. They could vary what they're doing, but... 
uh, if they're running it like an indoor daycare. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure the B D I would be it would be a good spot, but if some business if someone thought it would be uh, Yep. Yeah. It can't, yeah. can't be any worse than another nail salon. <laughs> <laughs> so S P P No. No, no yes. 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 By right away across. Next one is other religious or educational use. Okay, so the Dover Amendment requires you to um, allow religious or educational uses as long as they are on property that is owned by a nonprofit. Um, is there anything else I need, need, need to say? Okay. Wait, that's how that works? I thought the entity itself had to be a nonprofit. The owner of the property must be a nonprofit religious or educational institution. But there are other religious and educational uses that are not protected by the Do by the Dover. Uh, I, I was thinking, I was still thinking back to Dover. Okay. If so it, if, if a the church owner of the property is nonprofit, but I run some for-profit. Well, it's usually the other way around. Well, it's usually the other way around. It's usually the the, the, the church, if you will, is renting space in a you know a building that is owned by a by a. Sure, private owner. Private owner. But the operation is what I always thought. No, oh, it has oh. to be both the own ownership and the operation. You're saying both? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, for Dover. For Dover. So, so you can, you, you can, so you have two choices here. You can treat other religious and educational uses differently, or you can um, merge these, this one with the one above it and say all religious and educational uses are permitted by right. No, I wouldn't. Because um, I, I think when we get to the residential side, I think that those are, are different. Right. Definitely. Um, the only reason I don't personally want to, uh, the only reason I don't personally regulate any religious uh, thing is because I'm not allowed to. But the impacts from traffic and, um, and usage for those facilities is, is just as bad as a commercial facility. So I want to know where the cars are going, where they're coming, if they're parking buses on site and running shuttles back and forth to somewhere. So where we can, I would say we do. I would say that we put a special perimeter. Or we need to have some... Well, we need site plan. We need site yeah. plan review. Yep. Um, yeah, but I think it would be triggered by the, the change of use, if you will. You're suggesting that are, are these exempt from site plan review because they're religious or educational uses? No. They're not. These other ones have to go through site plan review. If they otherwise qualify. And actually, oh, so it might be minor site plan review. Sure, so, but that's, that's like any other commercial. They would be treated like any other commercial business right. in this context. Yeah. This context. Okay. Then I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem saying yes because they would come through site plan. Okay, so, so merge them. Do you want to merge them or do you want to well, get them? Well, but it seems like. Um, because the. I would keep them separate, yeah. even though they, they're uh, allowed by right. That does not exempt them from site plan review, whereas the, the 48, the Dover Amendment, right. changes the. Yeah. And if we're and I, we haven't gotten over there, but I, I think we probably have a different discussion on other residential and, and educational uses in residential districts. Yes. And if we're not going to merge them there, I would suggest we don't merge them. Correct. Right. right. Yeah. Somewhere, let's see. Like office. Tony, you had a a notice on boarding house and business A. Is that correct? You said that in the previous or in the current bylaw, boarding house <coughs> was allowed by right in business A. By my original note. Boarding house was yes for business A. 
believe. I can find our existing table of uses anywhere. So while you're doing that, if we move to the next table, is the header on the next table correct? No, that has printed copy. Well, so it's business and industrial. Okay. When you corrected it up top, it should have corrected it on the next page. Oh yeah. yeah. Should just be one table that's continuous. Yeah. Oh, it's just a good. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't know if we were moving on to the residential. No. No. We're in office. <coughs> okay, so do we want to allow boarding house by right in business A? I'd say no because I don't want to give up commercial property for a fully residential property. Okay. You know, if they came back and went through some review that that commercial underneath, I don't want to give up to commercial property. That's like my opinion. Anybody else think? Makes sense. Yeah. It is, a, it is a change, and we should be upfront about that. But so what are we saying? Are we saying SPP, or are we just saying no? Well, in the current bylaw, it is yes in A40 and yes in business A. But A40 is not a commercial district, so that one doesn't apply. The only one that the, <coughs> the business A, yeah, we just say no. <coughs> business A have residential property in it that's not part of business A. Are some of those houses on Main Street? The, the, the zone skirt around them? Yes. Okay, so well, I mean, the, there are stretches of South Main Street that are not business A. Where those residential properties are. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that could happen there. That would stay residential. Yeah. My biggest concern would be about giving up commercial property without mm -hmm. having to look to see what it's really doing. Okay. So we're keeping it no? Keeping, keeping it as the table is written, yeah. Yep. Okay. The next blank is office. Oh, I thought we did away with that categorization. You see, it came back. Facility used for the regular performance of business transactions or professional services, including related administrative and clerical activities, but excluding a medical facility. And this is di distinct from professional services? Professional services or financial institution or computer services facility? Professional services is it's almost like more of a verb. Predominantly on the premises of an office. Work undertaken for others in an office. Non-unprofessional, unprofessional work that happens in an office. <laughs> so this is like <laughs> well, which happens. Office come other. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so the definition of office, I believe, encompasses more than professional services. Business transactions for professional services. So, you are a stockbroker. Um, I, I would.
would think that in the Reading context, it would we would allow it as the same as we did as we um, did for professional services. Well, but I, the, the thing is, I, I don't know how you would decide which line to use, you know, which definition to use. Well, if you're if you if <laughs> if you're if you have an office and you're you don't you're not necessarily a professional service. Which happened? I mean, the from the cleaning, cleaning supply company that goes out and cleans houses. But how would they fit in there? Yeah. Like dustbusters used to be in the industry. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're saying keep it and make it identical to professional services. In general, it's going to have the same sorts of yeah. impacts. Yeah. Right. Okay. You good with that, Dave? So I'm just copying what professional yeah, services. Sure. I mean. Uh, and then I would assume you can make the same argument for a computer services facility. Well, this. I mean. We're trying. The question is: Is it relevant to? Uh, I mean, do we need this for a zoning distinction? There's the difference between office and professional services is a razor, razor pen, I think. Probably. Uh, uh, retail services. I think this was like one of those catch alls to make sure that people didn't have to go and get variances because there wasn't a definition in there. So I would not recommend getting rid of it in the first place. I agree. But, it yes. but, okay. but it does raise the question why you need some special services. Degree or education. Or it could be one line. It could say office and professional services, but right. it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a little extra detail and mm -hmm. I think it's going to hurt. Okay. Now, retail services. Don't well, place don't of assembly. Don't. don't think, yeah. hmm? Place of assembly is the next one. Yeah, I know. Oh. That. I don't know what the answer for or what the <laughs> out of field. What do you consider a place of assembly? How is that different from restaurants, which are places of assembly for the building code? Yes, so like private clubs. Community centers. This this includes movie theaters, bowling alleys, lecture halls, and banquet facilities. Say special permit because it requires it big spaces, large groups of people, and big big impacts. Um, I don't think um, in Reading that's necessarily a, a by right. Agreed. We're um, the Jordan Theater is in DDI. Right. Mm -hmm. So it should just be a special permit. Okay. All the way across. Yeah. Okay. You get that, Gene? So what are we, what are we doing? Yeah. <coughs> it's going to be special I'm sorry. permit across special permit for across. Across. places of assembly. Be 
retail services. I'm looking at the definition, I think there's something has crept in here that doesn't belong. For which one? The retail services. The definition says a commercial use where services or entertainment, but no products are provided for a fee directed to the general public for personal business or household utilizations. I don't know what the or entertainment. I don't remember that being in there. And I, I don't know what that creeped in and doesn't seem to make sense. Should just say commercial use where services, but yeah. no products are provided. Maybe. Might have been in there because of that. Because what? Yeah. And because sip. Uh, um, oh. <laughs> paint a, sip. Someone who wanted to come and do one of those, you know, you come and you paint, you have a glass of wine. It didn't fit any place. And I think that could potentially be yeah, why that was right. in there. The entertainment but is the wine, or is it that they could have music? Well, they, they're painting. 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 That's the entertainment? But, but that's the... <laughs> I, I feel like that's yeah. I don't know. That I, I don't remember seeing that before. But. I would consider it fun. It's been there. Uh, and that would be probably the way that it got here, but I'm not convinced that it needs to be there. Okay. And so uh, let's get rid of orange. Okay. trying to remember we had the issue of the consumer service retail establishment versus retail services and, and there's the thing that, that bothers me in the definition is the phrase it says but no product and I don't know where to put a hair salon that sells um, you know whatever his name is Paul Masson Shampoo. Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell. Retail services. So hair salon is retail services. I think the hair salon is supposed to be in the consumer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consumer yeah. Service. What was that? There's another use, consumer service retail establishment. Yep. That's it. Oh, yeah. All right, and that allows for the that's sale of those products by a separate So what is retail services? Like it, a, a real example. Shoe repair. Uh, yeah. That would be consumer, wouldn't it? Or... Uh, people still do that? <laughs> <laughs> we have them on, on the high screen, right? No, it's gone. <laughs> or a, or a walk-in computer repair facility, for that matter. What about Penske truck work? Fix-it chop firm lawnmowers. Yeah. Out those. yeah. Penske truck rental? It's basically, you know, it, it's... Yep. Things that stuff where you don't, don't walk, you don't walk out with something in your hand, unless you walked in with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost like, almost similar to dustbusters, I guess, too, where you go in and you're getting a service, but you're not necessarily they're not providing service there. You're not paying for a product, but paying for a service. Well, it's, right. you know, they don't have storage of items for sale. Yeah. You know, they have, what it's they not have paying is, for the service itself. Yeah, it's like a dry cleaning establishment. Perfect. That's a good example. Well, yeah. Dry cleaning or laundry or, you know, right. whatever. So we do yes across the board? Not if it's a Penske truck rental. Well... It's not Penske truck, truck rental because it excludes products that, uh, that it excludes products. So it's not providing a service. It doesn't say sale. It says provided for a fee. So rent, rental of products is not included in that. Okay. But the thing is, I, I still am not sure I understand 
which line to use if I've got a uh, shoe repair that sells um, shoe string or shoelaces. shoelaces. Or if I have, you know, the the uh, gel <laughs> gel insert machine. <laughs> Basically, any retail services uh, um, facility is going to try and sell you something, some product, yeah. or else they're not going to be business very long, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, right. even if it's not their main, their primary. Part of business, there's going to be the shoelaces or the yeah. So I mean, stuff. it's a good line to have, but I think we need to, to tweak the definition. So, Chris suggested instead of saying no products, say that the sale of products is incidental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. If you can figure out how to word that, yes. Well, it's his idea, so. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> so, <laughs> commercial use where services are provided for a fee directly to the general public for personal business or household utilization with uh, incidental with only with only incidental sale of products. I still don't understand why that excludes renting something. I pay a fee to use a truck. Isn't that a service? No. I and mean, I pay a no. fee to rent that truck. Well, it's, it's so we say only incidental sale or lease of product. But that's an automotive use, right? Depot rents out, you know, electric rakes. But that's not a that's not a principal use. Mm -hmm. That's an accessory use. Right, so we've, we've taken care of, of, of truck rentals by saying that it can only be incidental. Okay, but the gas station wanted to start renting trucks. On Main Street, want to start renting trucks. The primary use there is the sale of fuel and the products it has in its store. The sale of the rental of that truck would be considered incidental. They would argue that. Some lawyer would argue that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it, the only it's reason I'm getting is the service station, right? Yes. Right. So it's a, it, the renting the truck is incidental. My concern here is that I don't want to grant it by right. But I also don't want to, well, well, don't want to make retail services burdensome if they have to get a special permit. So. And more and more places are doing this now. They'll get one or two of these mm -hmm. trucks that they lease out, and they park them on the corners. And it's a big sign, but it's dangerous because it's blocking view lines, sight lines. You know, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Um. So if you can convince me that it excludes that use, then you can have it. Is it a question well, of trying to it does, find it? It does exclude it, but it doesn't. It begs the question: where where, where does it fall? Right. Where does it fall? Right. Okay, but at 10:02 p.m., whatever time it is, the, is this a yes across the board for retail services? Sounds like it is, mm -hmm. but then the question becomes. I'm not convinced that it excludes it. I don't know. It says that that lease of product is excluded. It doesn't say that. Incidental. Okay. Yes. It said incidentally, only incidental lease okay. of products. But if sale. But you can't. So. Primary business is selling gasoline. I happen to have this truck. I can lease you. Okay, but selling gasoline is is also. If the primary business is selling something like gasoline, then it's already so because selling of gasoline is not incidental. So you're saying it wouldn't be under retail services at right, all? Right, it would be under service station. I see what you're saying. You're yeah. saying that the 
the fact that it's a service station puts it in another category. Yeah. Okay, so what about um, somebody who's baking pies? <laughs> That's you want to make sure they don't rent truck on the side. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're seeing it all the time. The most random businesses are doing this. Drive through Malden. You'll see what well, I'm talking about. <laughs> the, yeah, but I mean, it's, if the service is a commercial oven to bake you, the pie that you bring in, that's, so that's that is in fact a retail service. <laughs> a retail. It's not a retail service. It's a sure. If, if they're baking the pie that you bring in, it is. But if they're selling no pie, then they're... Then well, that's, but that's why I said what I did. Uh -huh. I mean, if... <laughs> well, I guess... You know, br bring in your turkey and we'll cook it for you. Uh -huh. I mean, that's a retail service. Yes. So isn't this, isn't what, what Nick's um, uh, talking about really a, um, an issue for all non-primary uses? across the board, whether it's renting trucks or whatever it is. I mean, it's we, we run into that same, um, yeah. that same issue. Well, that's why we grew a table for accessory uses. So we'd have somewhere to, yeah. What is automotive sales? Is that just considered, it doesn't have a separate thing? As a use, but it's Sale of new or used motor vehicles. Where did you see that? Automotive First automotive one uses, one. line one. Does that include rental, rental as well? Point. There's no definition for <laughs> we don't have auto rental. Auto vehicle rental? Yeah. Or do you want to just make it the same as, as sale of new or used? You could say sale or lease of new or used, or you can have a separate thing. You'd have to add it to accessory uses. <laughs> you have that in accessory use. Mm. Well, well. But it's no I mean, about it can be a principal use. No, no, you need to add it to both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So under automotive use, right under sale of, of new or used motor vehicles. Other way. Yeah, in the table now we're talking about. Oh, table. Well, before we do that. Is it going to be the same as new or used? Same? Well, it's not for sale. They'll argue that they're renting them, they're not selling them. But if we say sale or lease of new or used vehicles? Well, lease is See, I, different I, I than rental. Sale or rental. I really think you want to... Oh, car sharing. Certainly as an accessory use, you want it under special, you want a special permit, because yeah. you want to look at all those conditions. You're not going to prohibit it as a principal use, right? Uh, probably not in certain zones, for sure. Okay. Uh, not in business B. Okay. We allow so sales of cars. After sale of, so under automotive uses. After sale of new used motor vehicles, going to add a new line. Okay. Yeah, whatever the yeah. terms are, rental or lease or whatever, <laughs> whatever legal term you need. Well, not long-term lease. Short-term short rental. Short-term rental. Short-term, and probably under sale, it probably needs to say sale or lease, since most most car I dealers. Say most lease, right? Mo mo most car dealers. Yeah. A good point of their business is leasing them. And then you need to define how long short-term. No, I don't really think you have to. Short term should be nice. Um, you don't have to? No. Okay. No. 
I think we'll let the um, building inspector figure that out. I mean, you, you, it's not possible to define every word. Uh, and, um, and if you try to, you will end up with a bond. You rent a car for six months? I might do it. We don't really church. care about the term. So. <coughs> So what they're doing, well, so we're saying yes to uh, sale of vehicles in business B. Would we let a new car lot come in to business B? Business B just motor vehicles too. Subject to site plan review. I mean, I thought. You know, at one point we were looking at the the um, high street edges of the downtown and thinking about what that should look like. And while we appreciate the automotive uses that are in there now, that you know, they are really the best kind of downtown use to have. There's no commercial presence. Right. So would you let somebody take the post office out and put a car lot there? there? No, I wouldn't. A special permit? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say special permit, but I'm not even. It's not no. to be. We've spent yeah. so much time trying to fix it. Right. Yeah. Let's make it now. We know all across. No, no, no. no, no we're no, talking no, about. We're talking about. So for sale. The sale or lease. Sale um, should not be yes in business B. Should be SPP in business B, if anything. I think we said no. Right. Okay. Okay. So now what are you going to do with the short-term rental of motor vehicles? So short-term rental should be. <laughs> this is as a principal use. Yes. No. No. Yes. No, yes. So the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, good. Did we land on retail services? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Did we, and we skipped over computer services. Yeah, we've got to go back. Do we say yes for retail services? We can't now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now Nick's feeling better. Good. Did you do place in the Computer services facility. Any reason it should be different from office or professional services? Or retail services, yeah. depending on what you're talking about. So we'll make that yes across. With SPP under PDB. That's what we have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gas station. On the floor. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, for the Dresden 130 John Street, before you go too far, uh, bar or tavern is not defined anywhere as far as I'm aware. I don't know if you need to add that. I could have sworn we had that in there. Okay, first. It's not in the current one either. Uh. Well, if you look at one of our old versions, it's there. It's probably <laughs> there. I really thought we had it in there. Yeah, because I, I thought we had we had a discussion about that too, because there was like four different types of restaurants, or plus the bar and tavern. That's right. The, yeah. So we need a definition for that. <sighs> I can probably try and find that old definition if you want. 
Yeah, let's do that. So you guys can yeah. keep going and keep I'll going. try and find that. We've got Gas Station Mini Mart. Um, Tony, are you following along with your comments here? Calling out the Ryan ones? Too, yes. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Uh, gas Station Mini Mart. Why do we have this definition? Uh, we didn't get Junkyard yet. Yeah, we didn't get Junkyard. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. How is that different from Auto Graveyard? More than just automobiles. Storing, processing, keeping, buying, or selling junk or discarded materials. Yeah. Is that outdoor storage? <laughs> Could be consignment. <laughs> <laughs> Is that open open storage. <laughs> storage of things that don't have much value. Yeah, junk. Well, remember, you've got this sort of oddball definition of open storage, which is only is this things that are for dis display for yeah. retail. Yeah. Doesn't, oh, yeah, that's doesn't right. mean yeah. actually open no. storage. Open storage. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but in fact, that's not <laughs> the intent of our definition. The intent of the definition is outside storage of things that will be sold yeah but not necessarily display for okay purchase. fair enough it does say outdoor storage or display of retail goods right. for sale okay but it doesn't mean yeah outdoor storage of stuff junk junk yeah yeah i mean the decision But a junkyard says that the the maintained, operated, or used in whole or in part for storing, processing, keeping, buying, or selling junk or discarded materials. So that if you do it anywhere on your property, you've poisoned your your use. Oh, so right now you're discussing primary principal use. Right. Okay, yeah. So you change your definition of junkyard to say principally maintained, operated, or used for storing, processing, or instead of in whole or in part. That's what you want to do. Yep. Yeah. And the zoning regulation in terms of the table of use is special permit or just no? <laughs> Where is it? Um, it's no in business B. It's here and it's blank so And far. it's no in business C. And it's no in business A. Oh. So no everywhere except for industrial and make it a special permit there? I would say special permit in industrial and PUDI. Otherwise no. You alright with that? Yeah. 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 Can't see that. There's other regulations that'll prevent it. Yeah. The wetlands and there's conservation. Yeah. And stuff yeah. That'll keep it up. Be very tough to do. But it is big business. Yeah. Processing. But the, the problem with Pro we don't want it in B. A is adjacent to all the neighborhoods. So the back yeah. end of it's yeah. gonna have all those yeah. junk in it that's gonna have against somebody's house. Yep. Jesse, did you find that definition? Bar tavern? The um the one that I the document I have from Ray after Ray took his initial look at it didn't have it included. So I don't know if we actually did have a definition for it. I know we had discussed it as a use. Yeah, so we've got to add it, right? Can we Well it mm, but or do we um, Okay. I guess we got to add it. I mean, we do need to add it. I think because because we specifically say no versus any other <laughs> any other use, and I think yeah. that that's that's will be challenged. How much food? 
what de it's what defines it bar it's versus your uh, definition of restaurant include include beverages. Yeah. Right. This is where the primary Somebody look it up in another bylaw. Oh, good man. So, so I see you changed it to service station mini mart. Well, that's because it just oh, matches, just yeah, it matches what's in the definition. Would there ever be a situation where we would allow a service station without a mini mart? Yeah, I think the, the question is, would ever anyone build a yeah, service yeah. station without That's a right. mini-mart these days? So I think the answer is yes, we would. We would allow a service station. Yeah, like Reading Petroleum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, those those uh, repair shops. Yeah. Don't have yeah. I mean, I, I question the need for the... the the line and the table. Can we just say with or without mini mart? Just leave it out. The service station. I mean, Hold on. we define it, don't we? Mm -hmm. So, service station with a mini mart. Generally, you're talking cars coming in and out near the parking lot. Is that really something you want in your downtown? Which there may actually be a good reason for this one to have a separate. So we have a definition of service station, which is a facility we use primarily for the sale of gasoline, motor oil, so on and so forth. And service station mini mart is a service station located on the premises, also containing a convenience store. So there's that That's emphasis a on. Huh? That definition doesn't make any sense. Service station located on the premises, also containing. Well, it's a basically, store. you know, it's, it's what happens when uh, Papa Gino's puts a gas pump on the side of their building. I mean, that's the way the definition is written. <laughs> it still shouldn't say service station mini mart. Uh, right. I understood the mini mart portion to be the store that's at the gas station. Yeah, we have a separate definition called convenience store. Right. So this is so strictly this is for the sale. This is a use that has both a service station and a convenience store. Two things in one use. Okay. What is the mini part? The pump or the store? Mini Mart. Mini Mart is the store. Okay, well, then this says a service station located on the premises. Why wouldn't it be a convenience store located on the premises of a service station? Yeah, yeah you're right. See what I mean? It, it seems like it's written back. Like, read it. it. It seems to be defining the service station rather than the convenience store. Well, then it wouldn't be an automotive use. The bar? Wouldn't it be a... Well, I guess it I could be an automotive use. Nice What'd you get? <laughs> I can be overruled. That's just the way I'm reading it. No, oh, I'm reading it the same yeah. exact yeah. way. Yeah. Would you, would you, would you I have no ideas. Uh, Google did. <laughs> 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 right. so well, let's I, I, service I station. Where, where so, service station, meaning my service station located on premises and also containing a convenience store. Why wouldn't it be? Convenience store located on the premises of a service station. Yes. Located on the premises of a service station. Well, I. Well, but. Uh, what, you, what you're really trying to do is you're trying. It, you're not. The service station mini mart is a is a is a two function. Use, right. Right. If we want to do so anything want to with say, service station and convenience store located on the same premises. Right. Yeah, and I would say delete the, the <laughs> replace the row for service station with service station mini mart, if you if you want. But we don't need both. I think it's a service station and convenience store. A service station and convenience store. What was that, Nick? Service station is not a repair garage, which has its own definition. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, 
it's the question of um, business, whether we combine them or not, I think comes down to business B, right? Because there's all those existing service stations without mini marts that have been there for years. They may not be the best use, but if someone goes in there and wants to go change something up a little bit, do we want to zone them out um, versus versus someone coming in new, either putting a mini mart in next to Weaver Auto or trying to do something else that sort of intensifies the, the auto use downtown, I would not be in favor of, but I'm, I'm not necessarily in favor of, of sort of zoning that, because there's a lot of them, and I'm not in favor of trying to zone them out. Yeah, that's a tough one because they they are actually some of the more successful businesses in the downtown. Yeah, obviously. they've been there forever. Mm -hmm. So I, I would advocate keeping service station having two lines, keeping service station as it is, but um, not having um, service station mini mart in business mm -hmm. B. Yes, no, no, yes, no, yes. Yes, no, no. Yes, no, yes. Yes. Okay, so we have dueling Google definitions of bar or tavern. <laughs> uh, boy. So, one I got, uh, the one that came up when I Googled it, uh, <laughs> it's from Chatham. Bar or tavern means a business established license to serve alcoholic beverages and designed primarily for the consumption of such alcoholic beverages on the premises, irrespective of whether or not food and or entertainment are also provided as complementary attractions. So we need that irrespective part, right? Um, so it basically says, designed primarily for consumption of such alcoholic beverages on the premises. You yeah. say irrespective of whether or not food is also provided, if you like. The other one, of unknown origin, <laughs> from dothndvan.org. Yeah. It a commercial enterprise whose primary activity is the sale of alcoholic beverages to be consumed on the premises. Bars include taverns, nightclubs, private clubs, bottle clubs, and then it puts in parentheses, BYOB. Right. And similar facilities serving alcoholic I've got a third. Okay, good. <laughs> what do you have? Uh, Stockbridge. Okay. Uh, an establishment. One of, my, one of our towns. <laughs> uh, I, but I don't like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> an establishment used primarily for the serving of liquor by the drink to the general public, oh. and where packaged liquors may be served or sold only as accessory to the primary use. Taverns and bars must serve food. I, I like the first one. Yeah, the first one is closest. California. <laughs> An establishment serving alcoholic beverages for on-site consumption as the primary use, including bars, cocktail lounges, pubs, saloons, and taverns. It's a good one. I like that. Nancy? Go that one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got to say it again, Nancy. Sorry. Okay, that's right. An establishment serving alcoholic beverages for on-site Sorry. <laughs> As the primary use, comma, including bars, comma, cocktail lounges. Cocktail. Cocktail lounges. Comma, pubs. Comma, saloons. And taverns. Okay, so yeah, we, we got we a couple we got a couple of problems with that. <laughs> um, we don't use primary use; we use principal use, and it, it, in, it includes the words. So bar or tavern includes bars and includes taverns. Um, so I think you probably just want to. 
you know, to get strike. rid of including bars. You just want to say including cocktail lounges, pubs, and, and so on. Just because we crib something doesn't mean that it's <laughs> 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 properly written. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> we are up to trucking terminal. Mm -hmm. No, except for industrial and PUDI. I would even say no for them. Yeah, because there's a the lot of, of that is that not limited to that zone. Okay. Yeah, there's coming in on the yep, yep, you know, right. a lot of impacts from yeah. something like that. So no across the board? Yep. Late night, it's, uh, it's that's a crazy facility. And, and Redding's actually probably a good location for something like that. I'm not saying that's being something that the listeners would want. No. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a good thing to add in here. Mining, is that what's next? Okay, now we have, it turns out we have place of assembly in two different places now. Skip over mining. mining. Is there an issue with having place of assembly uh, as a recreational I'm, I'm use? Sorry, this one's going to be my fault because I do not. I added it because I said it's not listed. But it was listed. It was listed, so I just inadvertently added it. Which one? Place of assembly. Oh, oh okay, cool. So just take it out of under business and service and leave it where it's already. But we um, said we wanted it spe by special permit, right? <coughs> yep, we said special permit. Mm -hmm. So do we want to yeah. keep that uh, under recreational use, but change it to special permit? Um, yes. Yeah. Can you go back to the first one, please? <coughs> To the recreation or, one? Uh, place of assembly? Yeah, I mean, what is different from what you have? What you, what what you have last the recreation time, What you originally had discussed. <coughs> I think it's in mm -hmm. existing there. No, I don't think it is in the existing bylaw, but it's. I mean, the, the issue there is that, uh, by definition, they have lots of people, lots of impacts. Um, but so maybe in the industrial group, we'll leave it gas and make it special on the other page. Residential buffer around it. 
I don't know why we bothered to call it a business district when it's not business. <laughs> well, because it was zoned, it was zoned for office. The business C original zone is all office buildings, which is a pretty docile use if you think about it. It's shut down on the weekends. And Actually, a smart growth area. <laughs> So place of assembly is listed in our current business and services use, only allowed in business A, B, and industrial currently. And everything else is no. Correct. Yeah, but the... Think about the worst of the impact. So a movie theater, right? It's a big black box. Do you want that in business B without some ability to control what they're doing? I, I, I wouldn't think so. I, 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 I do on I get the I like the suggestion about the industrial because we as essentially already have that. Mm -hmm. Um and and it's really not that but, uh, substantial impact, but I think. Before you say a, no, you absolutely, we're not going to allow it at all in A. I mean, there's plenty of places that have small movie theaters, they're local. I, it seems to me that that would be crazy to make that a no, personally. That would be the type of business you <coughs> might want yeah. downtown. Yep. Yeah. So. Well, I don't see any particular reason to change what. We have. We have three different things in three different places. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one do you not want to change? <laughs> well, the what's what's in the uh, page twenty eight of the, the current draft of the bylaw, which is the one which is under recreational uses. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes, yeah. Matches the existing zoning bylaw with the but it is extended to include the PUDB and the PUDI because those are not listed as columns in the existing right. zoning bylaw. Otherwise it's the same. And at five minutes to eleven might not be the best time to change it. Yeah. I mean it's I just let it go. Again, so someone comes in with a proposal for business for the post office. They're gonna put in their black box theater. We don't get any storefront out of it because we don't have any way to control that. Special permit. Ch it's change of use. It's a site plan review. I mean, I, I yeah, but it's that, just but it's a site plan come review. Down to this yeah. is the best we can do bullshit that we get all the time. You know, you're just not going to win that argument. Yeah. There's only so much control. We really don't have that much control. All these pages, they mean almost nothing. When someone gets a lawyer in front of you and starts telling you what they can and can't do, but I would counter that now you're going to bring all these people in for a specific theater production, and then you've yeah. got restaurants in, in business the area. Being, right, in business being. Right. 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 So in the right context, it, right. it, it, it could, could work. work. Well. So I wouldn't say no, but I wouldn't say yes, uh, like uh, as was told, mm, site plan review, really, you can't say no. Right. It's, you just nibble around the edges. So um, that's why I would say, uh, you know, uh, a special permit because it gives you the control if someone comes in with some black box and says this is what we're doing right you can so say do that in industrial, do it in no just industrial. I'm just talking just about business B. Yeah. See, in business, the downtown smart growth gives us much more control that, that 48 doesn't yeah. give us right 48 uh, okay so SPP on business B yep okay that's all I was changing everything else is good did you get rid of the other place of the get rid of the other one yep all right let's keep going mining <laughs> mining is yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if we find something? Find oil in my yard. That's mine. No oil cross? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Recreational accessory use. What? Right? Oh, recreational accessory use. Somebody help me out here. 
<clears throat> is this a basketball court in your office parking lot? I mean, is it like mm -hmm. the um, the trapeze place at Jordan's? Yeah, yeah. Which is no longer there. Now it's going to be a what? A rope score. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Same thing, right? Yep. Or it could be a use. commercial amusement, right? Oh, it's an accessory. Yeah. Or is it, yeah. or yeah. Is it the, the climbing wall at Dick's Sporting Goods? Oh, man. They have a climbing wall? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't know. Which one? Yeah. The one In the Danvers. Danvers mall, Liberty, mall. Liberty Tree Mall. Where? I guess in, in the center, there. right when you walk in. Oh. What used yeah. to be what used to be Galvin's. Uh, huh. Do you know which? Where yeah, that is? I, yeah, I go there all the time. <laughs> walk right past. Um, so I how do we want a mission a somewhere else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. come on, come on. I'm getting tired. How do we want to restrict this? Or do we? I mean, or do we? Yeah. Why? Yeah, I just say yes. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we're overthinking this. Maybe I am at least. Okay, we'll do yes across. Yep. Okay. Bed and breakfast. This is as an accessory use. Bed and breakfast is defined as an accessory. It is an accessory to. It has to be an accessory to. Oh. So it doesn't belong here. Why upstairs? Why doesn't it belong? Well, no, it, it, you have residences in your, I mean, you that's the reason why it's here. Because right. I, and specifically because I said, yeah. you want to prohibit, right. do you want to allow beds and breakfast in residences that are not located in residential districts? Like the non conforming yeah. Yeah. uses? So, in other words, if you had a house downtown, that could actually be a good place, place for a bed and yeah. breakfast. <laughs> Often that's where they are. Much much less impact than in a residential area. Right. Also, if the breakfast part is open to the public, that's not a bad little restaurant sometimes. Mm -hmm. Usually they're not though. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. There's a bunch of those in Maine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay. In a in a resident, I mean, in a in these commercial. Districts, uh, I, I can't imagine saying no. Yeah. Yes, all across. I mean, it's sort of odd and industrial, but. but well, if there aren't if any somebody thought they could yeah. make make money doing it, I guess. Right. How about it? Yeah. All right. Well, actually, that's a point because residential uses are not allowed in industrial PUDB or PUDI. Oh, so maybe there but be but there but be. are there? Pre it doesn't. Yeah, pre-existing. I, I don't know. I get to imagine there's might be one or industrial pre-existing. I, I would this, no. Let's say yes, 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 and A, B, and C, and and no, 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 and the others. I got no. It makes no difference to me one way or the other, honestly. Do you want that to be no yes? Yes. I'm sorry, PUDB, no. No. Right. Because it's PUD business. Good. Next one. Be beacon. Beacon. What is it? Beacon is a. Basically, it's a uh, It's just a continuation. Oh, it's a what? In your sign by where you were uh, 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 proposing <laughs> you, uh, you, oh. Oh, okay. prohibit beacons. Right. Yes. So no, 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 no. Good. You need to add the um, you need to yeah. add the rental thing that we added. The primary usage, right, under automotive. Uh, the short-term rental and lease thing. Don't we need to add that now to the accessory uses? Yes. Yes. Wasn't that in here? 
So now we're into residential districts and other religious or educational use. Uh, but before we actually escape the first table here, the does the, does the accessory use become short-term rental of motor vehicle or mobile equipment? Splitter or, or things trailer mounted. Am I going to short term rental of motor yeah, vehicles? You're copying that but and, and sticking it down on and the accessories. Right. Um, it's the as same. a as an accessory use and if it's not Outdoor storage. Like Home Depot, all their stuff is inside, right? Or just around back. Yeah, so it's not visible. This is just a motor vehicle. This is about this is about rental trucks and cars. Yeah. Yeah. Primarily, but I, I understand where you're you're getting at. If the guy's going to have a well, trail. if he's got a yard full of of uh, snow plows. Mm -hmm. That you attach to your own pickup truck and you rent them for the season, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's since it, it, it doesn't seem to be otherwise covered. Yeah. Short term rental of motor vehicles. Accessory. Yeah, but you're saying, or. Mobile equipment. Mobile equipment. Keep in mind, you don't have to define every accessory use that you want that you're going to permit. There's also a general um, statement that accessory uses. Definition of, of customary, incidental, and, and, and secondary, and don't alter the nature of the premises are always permitted. And you couldn't possibly define every accessory to you. So you really only need to define things that, you're, that, um, that you want to call out specially. Well, there's a bunch of residential properties that will put bobcats and excavators in their front yard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like disorder. <laughs> if I wanted to live in a more urban environment, I would have picked a more urban town. <laughs> and I, I grew up in that. That was mm -hmm. fine back then. I chose something different. Okay, so now we're in the residential districts. Yeah. Other religious or educational use? do in the business district for that? Uh, yes, across the board. Okay. Yeah, but it can't be yes across the board in, in the residential districts. It has to be something a little, with a little more control. <coughs> and I would suggest that it might be yes in the S15-2040 and no in the others. No, I wouldn't say yes in S15. That means somebody could stick a church next door to me and Park their trucks and shuttles next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Driving around all day as people come in and out. That's a, that's a commercial use. I don't care what you want to call it, but those are commercial uses. <laughs> that's a whole thing under signage that I didn't want to get into under the consideration. <laughs> Shrink wrapped cars. So, no one to the residence and. Well, I, I know. I, I, think, I think it should be a special permit because yeah. I, I think you need to be able to say no if the impact is beyond what the neighborhood can sustain. No. And then you're gonna say no for the others. Yeah. Dave. Yeah, I don't. I mean, A40, A80 doesn't make any sense. 
So it doesn't make any sense, but. I'm just thinking if somebody would be able to do it with the density that's allowed in those areas, the property has mm -hmm. more value than, than for this type of use. I don't think it would ever happen. <coughs> and PRDG, PRDM. I think the those PRD. Are still, those are still like, uh, what are we at? Those are, you know, subdivisions. So we'd say that they're very similar to the S districts, right? Yeah, and that's where you get into the, you know, I, I, maybe maybe it does make sense to have an educational. <laughs> okay, so that's SPP. Yeah. Special SPP, permit. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's a oh, continuation it. okay. spacing. Yeah. Okay, so we get on that one. one yeah. <coughs> Be careful. Three more. This time I'm counting. Recreational accessory use. So that's. I would say yes. The residential vets, things like tennis courts and, and swimming pools. That's what I think it's but no, those are uh, those are accessory buildings now. Accessory right. structures. Right. Accessory, right. accessory structures. structures. And they're not uses. They're, not uses. they're right. accessory structures right. now. So then what is this? Which I don't necessarily agree with, but. This is a little rope, the tight rope thing from Jordan that someone's putting in. Just like accessories. Yeah. Trampolines. Accessory to a residential I, that's not already defined. The, the pool I, that you have, you start renting out. You might go somewhere. I don't know. I wouldn't call it. Yeah, I mean, this, thing, this right? has an, a commercial flavor to it, right? There's the use here that's beyond just you using your residential premises for recreation. Yeah, swimming or tennis or whatever. So no. I would say I, I can't even conceive of what it hmm? would of what this would be. He so said skating like, rink in my house. You want to use it? Skating rink over the floor. Able to. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. Something how the what I'll probably so do I don't know, it's maybe it's right? just special it's permit all the way across and okay. if someone brings something to you, you can So if he says we can get I entertain it. I'm going to get a print job it done. As for a I would say rather than this way. Because I'm afraid the yeah. man might read this and say, oh, you're going to put a pool table in your garage. I'm but they may, not, they may <laughs> not have printed this way. That may be able to include the table. But you're considering that commercial. Well, that's why, well, I, you know, I'm not sure why we want it in the today. table right. at all. But right. I, I would be worried about it. They do it today. Pick it up at like What was that, Nancy? Was I'd be worried about it and how it gets defined. Because yeah. if it's, it could be yeah. construed as being a ping pong table. It could be construed as, you know, a pool table. Well, it's not all to the character of the use, though. Accessory use is customarily incidental and subordinate. It does not alter the character of the principal use. So a pool table in your house... Well, I'm thinking in an accessory building. Or, I mean, I don't know. I, I so, uh, um, I, the, in the last table, we said yes all the way across. We're having trouble sort of understanding how, in the residential, this doesn't fit into just the accessory structures or just the principal use. Um, going back to your comment about we don't need to define every mm -hmm. every accessory use because it's already approved, then maybe we don't need this in either either table. Maybe we're just being too yeah. we're defining Descriptive. things too much. That's a really good point. Can't get out. 
take it out. When in doubt, take it out. So we're going to take it out of both tables. Yep. Yeah. We're taking it out of both tables? Yeah, we said yes all the way across on the other one. Okay. When I yeah. was a, a brand new lawyer, I, one of my first mentors gave me that piece of advice. If you don't know what to say, say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, two more, bed and breakfast and family child care home, which apparently we have not defined. Although we have a note. Oh, do we have a note? Total mm -hmm. number of children. Oh, yes, I see. 16. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's do, let's do bed and breakfast. So what do we say for bed and breakfast? So and SPP for S15, S20, S40. Right. A40, A80. No, right? I'm not Can't sure how they fit. Can't even do it. Well, according to the definition, it has to be a one or two family. Okay. Right? Yep. Yeah. Well, except that they, those are one or two family is allowed in A40. Right, I mean, it could be there. Yeah, that actually might be appropriate. Okay. Oh, I thought we were just reading, I thought we were doing SVP across the first three, and then no. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Let's do that. SPP, SPP, and no. No, I think we were saying another SPP for A80, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, any of the residential districts, we could look at it. Yeah. And then no. What was the last one? No, last two no. Yeah. We don't think they can do it then. Okay. One more. PRD general. General. Uh, David Janelle lives at what's lives in a PRD. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Yeah. Maybe you should make that one as a special permit as a potential one. You yeah. could have a municipal building that you could potentially might. I don't know. Well, but that argues for SBP across the board. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. Yeah. And then family child care home. You think the same? Special permit across? Mm -hmm. Special permit across? Isn't that just yes? Isn't it yes? I was going to say, isn't that just yes? Is it? Okay. What is it today? I know they're in home. Daycare is today. How is it different from a daycare? This is permanent resident? A. The definition of family child care home is a private residence that on a regular basis receives children not of common parentage under seven years of age or children under 16 years of age, if those children have special needs, for non-residential custody and care during part or all of the day separate from their parents. Shall not include a private residence used for an informal cooperative arrangement among neighbors or relatives or for the occasional care of children with or without common. So we're allowed to regulate these by a special permit if they, we so choose? Yeah, they, so regular daycare facilities are um, have a, a uh, protection under Section Dover, 3. Right. A Dover-like. Yeah. But then it says, but you can require a special permit for family daycare homes. Child care, family well, child care homes. What, they, yeah. right. they come in and cry Dover, and you can only do so much. But mm -hmm. there's always traffic and parking impacts that 
again, you get the whole, this is the best we can do. No, not necessarily family my, daycare. My kids were in that kind of a thing, and there were no parking in that. I mean, there weren't. Yeah, they had, they had a bigger three kids, five kids, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they were not yeah. parking in that. So I'm just saying. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we're saying the daycare ones will tend to have 10 kids or more. And we can point you to several of them that have, uh, that have had all kinds of parking problems to go look for accessory, I mean, uh, shared parking in other lots. Well, but this, this, lot, not this, a is it? The family, the family thing is, is Limited to six. Right. That, so this which is also reflects um, the way that they're regulated by the Department of Children and right. Families. They don't allow more than six in it. The ones that you've heard about are ones that are doing it really. No, they're just they're licensed for more kids. No, they can't be licensed for more than six. No, no, oh. the ones that we're talking about. They're, 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 they have, don't fall in this category. The category. They're, they're, they're in the other category. Right. So we saying yes? Yeah. Across the board? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Tony? They can be licensed for more if they have an assistant. It's six for one primary adult. Oh, okay. If you have an assistant, you can have an additional four. Right. Thank you. So this is actually, our note here is actually changing what these family daycares can provide yes. today yes. because this says up to six right now you can have more than like like Tony said you could have twelve up to or twelve I think it's up to twelve if you have an assistant I think it's ten I think once you're yeah. over ten you have well to okay ten or twelve but so so this is changing the family <coughs> daycare so what would they uh, do town of Reading, which Reading. is available by right Yes. If you have six or fewer. What if they said we want to have ten? We're saying yes, aren't we? Yeah. That's not good. So what if, I guess, what if you have more than that? That's it's my no question. Longer, no longer an accessory use. Or <laughs> oh, that's right. We're in the accessory table. And so, so what are you? Child, you care, child care facility. Public in uh, Well, that's not where you want to be because those have to be permitted by right. So I'm just going to look this up. See what it says. Okay, so while, okay. while we're doing that, um, it's 11. Tony, I just I went through the rest of your paperwork. I did not see anything else that had the green highlight, which we were targeting. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable that your comments have been? I am comfortable that. 90% of my comments have been addressed, and if there are additional comments, I would have to bring them up in front of town meeting. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's try not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, a little tricky. Um, Jeff? Yeah. There is one typo that I just want to point out. Sure. 5.4.7.4. Yeah, it needs to be 5.4.7.4. It's just missing a P, the very first sentence. 5.4.7.4. 5.4.7.4. Yep. Yep. Shall be limited? Shall be limited. Okay. And then that, and I, and I just had a question, and I, I know there's so many different use categories, but what happens if you do get a person who doesn't need any of these? I know we have general requirements and all that, but like, what happens when we have somebody that does it? Do we tell them they have to get a special permit? Do we, is there any? Well, they have to. They have to get a determination. Yeah. Did he say that in there? I didn't read it. There is there is a uh, a line somewhere for uses substantially, substantially similar, similar to, to other a by right <laughs> use. It's the last. <clears throat> It's the last line in uh, below mining. Um, <laughs> if you remember where that was. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> substantially similar to a by right use. You go to the ZBA. Oh, good. Okay. And then I, and the accessory apartments, uh, not accessory apartments, but was it, Nancy, that you brought up about fences? 
Oh, you I thought it was just a comment. Yeah, about the six, the six foot. foot. And she was talking about the top part of it. Yeah. It didn't get changed. But the, the, the foot is that up to them? I mean, was that the decision you guys made that didn't want Frankly, to? I don't think we, well, how extensively did we discuss that? Well, we did, we discussed it, but I mean, the, uh, oh. what what height is the normal height of those fences, Nancy? Well, it's six feet is the normal height of the fence, and then usually Walpole puts on like another twelve inches. Sometimes it's fifteen inches above of lattice or mm -hmm. pickets or something decorative. It could be lower, but that's typical of what they do, just to give a little bit more height. But you know, it's up to them. I, I think if you're staying only six feet next to a neighbor, it's, I guess the only thing I would caution is if somebody has a, where's the six feet? Is it the fence itself? Or is it on top of a retaining wall? It can only be a total of six feet. And where is it measured? Is it measured from the yard that's putting it in? Or is it measured from the neighbor's yard? I mean, there are some <laughs> perks on your six foot limit that may have to be addressed, but. Well, it can't be on their property, so it has to be measured from your property. From your property. So if you have a retaining wall on your property and you want to put a six-foot fence on top, it could be eight feet. Well, it, Is that what you're it could be eight feet if it were measured from the bottom of the retaining wall on the other person's property. Yes. Oh, if you have a retaining wall on your property and you want to put in a, uh, they have a retaining wall and you put a fence um, on top, right on the edge. I mean, it could be any combination. Right? Mm -hmm. So but their there property's up here, yeah, you have a retaining wall on your property, and then you put your fence on top of it, it's going to be eight feet. Yeah. You know, wherever it is. I'm just throwing out another problem with the <laughs> six foot height limit. That's all. Mm -hmm. It's by code, you need a permit to put a higher fence in. What is and we're limiting there? everybody to only six foot fences between our yards. Right. We've got quirks that are going to come up. So, and so what, what do you believe it should say? What? I don't, think there should be a limit. Mm -hmm. I don't think there should be a limit. But there is. So it you think be. that somebody should be allowed to put a 16 foot fence in between? Well, I, I, I'm just saying, yeah, like I, I, know. Said, I, I guess. What's reasonable? So, What's reasonable? so right, yeah, I, I, I guess reasonable. right now, right, isn't there some, isn't there some limit on the height of fences? Not necessarily, obviously not in zoning, but isn't there some other limit and building, about building, I mean, building code? We'll, we'll, yeah. By building code, anything higher than six feet, you need a permit to put in. But that doesn't necessarily tell the owner that they can't put in. I mean, if you put in, a sixteen foot fence, and it's going to need a lot of support. In, so, in, in so, in so, um, in, in, in so, um, what would that permit? I mean, we're talking a building permit. Yeah. Building so permit. I guess here's my question to the board: Is what do we? Is there an issue we're trying to solve by limiting fences to six feet? Because we don't have 16 foot fences. People generally aren't gonna, I mean, if you can get the, you, if you put in a six foot fence and you can just put it in with the fencing contractor, you're not gonna go to eight feet if you then need to go get a permit Spikes. for it. Yeah, the only way I can you're see someone putting a taller fence in is if they have a court. A sports court, and that's, sports court. And that's right. governed, and, and that's, that's a structure. structure that has to be five feet off of the property line at the back of their yard. So it's already governed in terms of the accessory structure use. So, so does it make sense to take the, the height limit out if it's already going to be, like we have it in there as a bylaw, but they're already going to have to get a permit for it? I, I guess it, we're, it sounds to me like we're trying to solve, regulate something that it, it's, has already been sort of self-regulated and hasn't been a problem. The so six-foot limit is a structural concern. Right. Correct. You get a it's permit a to make sure it's not going to collapse. Right. Right. So Just like four-foot retaining wall. So yeah. <clears throat> I don't know well, why we're... Well, the question is, if, if you're the neighbor... <laughs> And the, f and the fence is too tall, who do you go to? Well, well what's too tall? Really? What's too tall? And I would say my neighbor feet. has hemlocks that are going to grow to 15 feet, so I can't complain about that. But <laughs> I, mean, that's, I mean, that's the other thing. There are trees and hedges that are yeah. growing taller than six feet that are living fences to some extent. Yeah. You know? The only problem with fences is when they're when you're on a corner lot and you run that tall right. fence to the corner, you can't you don't you lose the sight line down the road, so it becomes mm -hmm. dangerous, and no one's enforcing that. So. Yeah. 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 Ye
Well, I think there used to be a provision in there that you couldn't build it high, and I don't think it was ever enforced. You can't build to the corner. They well, tried to get something in that wasn't really reasonable. I think. Yeah, that was that was yeah, something was a little crazy. Yeah, that was yeah. Of, that was but that's not really come back. Right. It should be addressed, but it never came back. So, so I have, we want I have to no do problem with taking out the six foot limit. I would advocate taking out the six foot limit. Well, now that says flagpoles too. Well, you know, take the whole thing. It out. doesn't. The thing. No, you need a permit. So I say. Yeah. But this is this is the this is protect your neighbor thing. I mean, it's, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say if it's going to be on the property line, or you know, within the required yard, if you will, <laughs> then it's reasonable to restrict it to six feet. You know, if you want to put it five feet back, ten feet back, whatever, you know, knock yourself out. But is seven feet unreasonable? Especially if you consider, you know, there are a lot of fences that have, you know, scallops or they have little sheets of lattices or they have things that are on top. Yeah, and a they lot do. of them. And a lot of them look like the the uh, fortified yards down in, in Peru. I mean, <laughs> they look like a fortified compound. I mean, they look. Is the cow? I mean, <laughs> bring it up a town meeting. There's got to be. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Uh, it's compromised like here. Do we want to increase it to? I don't see why you have feet, it in here because they already have to get a building permit. Yeah, but one the building permit portion is safety. Yeah. That the, the fence is built properly. And then the six foot height that Dave's talking about is more about impact, you know, the aesthetic impact and but, but the aesthetic is not anything that comes into play here, it's just the pure height. So it can still look like a compound, you know, yeah. whatever kind of fence you put up to speak. Right. And I would argue <coughs> that some of these other fences you're talking about look actually much nicer right. than one that's just gonna be six feet. Yeah, and so the, the issue is great. Nice great. So <laughs> you, it, it, to the people that own the small uh, parcels down on, uh, um, what's it towards REI that street that goes up? Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, small lots. Mm -hmm. The thing they want are high fences. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can't put it back by five feet no, because you don't have the yard. You, you, don't, have the the yard. Yard. you, can, right. you don't have the yard. So. You want an an eight foot fence, and so does your neighbor. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Everyone wants good. an eight foot fence because that way, when you're standing up there, you yeah. you can't yeah. see over. You're not looking right at um, And so you, now you, you can't. <coughs> so we yeah. don't have this today, correct? There's no. Is there a, in the current zoning bylaw? Is there a, a restriction on eight on, on six feet? I think. Are you I sure? I would recommend you take it out and bring it up as a separate item. You know, in a future meeting, like we're doing with some of these other items. Okay, if it's. Okay. Oh, I have the answer about the family child care home. <laughs> okay. okay, okay. So, we, what we need to do. So, the, the, the statute distinguishes between a family child care home, which has up to six, and a large family child care home has up to 10. Um, and what it says is family child care home um, and large family child care home shall be allowable use unless the city or town prohibits or specifically regulates such use. So if you, the question was if you limit it to six, what happens to six through 10? And the answer is not regulated at all. So you want to change that so that the limit in the footnote is 10 instead of six. Okay. Okay. Do we make that change or? She hasn't made it yet. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Gotcha. That's what she needs to do. Okay. So where am I going? You're going to the footnote under the use table. In both places. Total number of children will not exceed six. You want to change it to ten. Same 
the same with um, uh, in, the, in the residential Again, I'm sorry, in the residential in the Well, when they go up to that. You know. Ian, have we addressed yeah. all your? Excellent. Thank Nancy? You. Yeah, I, other than the fence issue, Mitch. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Good. Okay. Tony, we're good. RC. What are you going to do with the fence then? That's, we're, we're not done with that. <laughs> That's our last <laughs> time. Okay. Sir, do you have any input or comments? Sure. I think you also have to change the definition for uh, family child care. I think that includes six. I think you're right, yeah. No, no. Has a 16 years of age. Has a six there. I was going to say, if I could, it violates my rule of don't say anything twice if you can get away with saying it once. Back to the fences. Back to the fences. Find anything? It's not here. Therefore, leave it out. Okay. Pull it. So we want to take the whole thing uh, because it also talks about flagpoles. Dilly G, right? Yeah. Well, you don't about know. The flagpoles part you leave, right? Do we regulate yes. flagpoles today? You not well, you you don't want to. You just want to take out the not to exceed six feet, right? You want to leave that fences are. Exempt from yard requirements. Yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, but I'm not sure it reads that way when you take it out, so be careful. No. Take it out first and then take out it. not to exceed six feet. Fences. And yeah. uh, the height not to exceed. Well, now it says fences and flagpoles, not to exceed fences. Fences, comma. Mm -hmm. Well, just take out the, I mean, the 20 feet is also. It's, or put why it would you need a limit on the flagpole? Just to tell the building inspector that he doesn't have to worry about it. Shall we exempt from the yard requirement set for the expenses in terms of the buffer between budding to the front and they exceed? So in that sentence, you can get rid of. Mm -hmm. I think if you reverse the first sentence and start it with flagpoles of a height not to exceed 20 feet okay. and fences. And, and fences, that's yeah. what, that, that's the way. No, don't, don't, just put a capital F on your flagpoles. Get rid of the hand. Okay, get, get rid of everything out in front of it. And the fences. And fences. Oh yeah, no. We gotta close the public <coughs> hearing and then we gotta vote. I just wanna see if Gene Jesse have anything. Can I add just one question? Do you need to say a fence exceeding six feet in height? That's the only thing I'm asking. Oh, sure. Since, I, I, since, we, since we took out all the references to yeah, height, right, exactly, it yeah, makes sense height. to say exceeding six yeah. feet in height. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, because it could be linked. Good catch. <laughs> Move that the CPDC <laughs> close the public hearing for the content of Article 8 for uh, subsequent town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Everybody can raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Move that the CPDC recommend 
the content of the revised zoning bylaw for adoption by town meeting. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Do we have anything else we need to discuss? Sorry, uh, you, you second it. What? You second? John did. John did. <laughs> I think we can adjourn. We have Move to time. adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. <coughs> Do I have the order to go?